Hello and welcome to Beer Tier, the German engineer. Yes, today we are finally back. Yeah, a week without me. I don't know what you guys were up to, but today we're finally back. And who do we already have in chat here? We have Frozen Hair, we have Croc, we have Kionis, we have Sin, of course, we have Cassiopeia, we, and we have AC. Ah, it's always nice to see familiar names. Obviously, all of you guys have been here basically the entire time I've been streaming. So, yeah, definitely always nice to see you guys coming back. That is really, really awesome. Frozen Harris says, I was looking forward to this all week. My goodness, I should have streamed earlier, I guess. <laughs> I specially trained for a week on a frigid planet to better immerse myself in the atmosphere. <laughs> Yes, you sure did, Croc. I saw all the evidence, uh, all the evidence on Discord. Um, what else do we have here? Um, button seat, getting popcorn, waiting. Of course, Sin. This time here from the very beginning. That is very, very nice. And Cassiopeia here as well. And David is here. Tired, gonna watch anyway. Yeah, I feel you on that one. I feel a little bit under the weather myself. I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice or something. But there's definitely some kind of little bug going around where I am. So, uh, there's definitely going to be a lot of coffee that will get me through the stream. But definitely nothing that will stop me from spending my time here with you guys. All right. Can anybody remember what we did last time? <laughs> uh Carolis says, hello, greetings from Lithuania. Lithuania. I'm pretty sure that's another brand new country that we haven't had yet. So thank you very much for joining from Lithuania. That is amazing. And we have Ojin as a level two engineer. I haven't even moved the mouse yet. Holy cow. Thank you very much for the support. I truly, truly appreciate it, Ojin. Ah, that's amazing. All right, guys. So, I would say let's take a quick look around. Last time around, we built this wonderful spawn system right here. Well, it's not really a spawn as we talked about last time. Uh, self-powered oxygen machine, it's a lot of things, but it's definitely not self-powered. But, as usual, that is not how I operate anyway. I prefer to have my hydrogen come out and into, for, for example, right here into a uh, infinite storage, and then feed it into my power area. At least, what we currently call our power area. It looks a, a little bit bleak, but we will get there. How about I press the spacebar real quick so all of those damn notifications go away because those are super, super annoying. All right, that's better. Other than that, we dug all the way down and we finally found us some crude oil. We have this crude oil here completely molten up, which is, of course, the best way to do it because right here we can see it has about 3,200 kilograms of mass and if we dig it up and then liquefy it, we will lose half of its mass. And that is certainly something we don't want to do. Therefore, we have a bunch of crude oil right here, which will come in very handy. But when we take a look into our F1 overlay, uh, we can see it is nice and blue right here. But in our F4 overlay, it doesn't look so good because it's all polluted oxygen. So the first thing today that I want to do is, I think we should go after atmosuits. And for atmosuits, we will need thimble reeds. So... Yeah, how are we going to do that? With temperatures that look like this, that is going to be a slight issue, I would say. But nothing we can't overcome. Let's see. Another thing that we built last time right here is uh, this uh, tiny little area right here for our polluted water. All these mechanized airlocks here are built out of, out of uranium ore, so we can get the radiation to clean our polluted water. But the problem is, now that it's in the infinite storage, it's kind of hard to heat it up, right? So, what we probably will do is we will just right here snip off our uh, pipe right here, or our uh, um, liquid pump, and make sure that we keep this polluted water in here for a little bit longer, so we can con uh, so we can control its temperature. So, that's the first thing that we are going to be working on. So, we need a liquid tepidizer, and the liquid tepidizer, we are just going to plop it, doesn't really matter too much, right there. Uh, then we will need a thermal sensor, gonna plop it on the bottom, and of course some automation wires. On top of that, of course, conductive wires as well, all the way over to, you know what, screw it, we're gonna build it completely, and we're gonna finish it off. Just as simple as that. Obviously, you gotta set up our thermal sensor here properly, but other than that, we should be golden. We're just 
taking this polluted water here and we're gonna heat it up and we will need that otherwise our thermal reeds will die a horrible death and that is not something we want where are we going to build our thimble reed farm though how about right here that seems to be a pretty nice area so yeah let's do that in base we are going to grab us a insulated tile and with our insulated tiles uh, how big does the area have to be though i don't know exactly how many seeds do we have how about we start there um thimble reed seeds of course let's take a look at that we have six right now this here is an area of 12 twice as many as we have right now i think that's a good start okay let's build it down here we need three high plus a one via hydroponic farms and one more so that actually works out just fine all right guys let's dig this here up as well dang it it didn't auto start <laughs> well that sucks then <laughs> that is the problem I would expect it to do that. And two dollars from Thin as well. My goodness. Thank you very much, Thin. You know it. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, Croc says I'm using metal refinery to heat the water from negative 10 to plus 15. Well, the metal refinery uh, will be coming uh, down here very, very soon. We have this liquid tepidizer right here. Um, yeah, of course, we won't need that anymore for really anything, so we can get rid of it. But I'm just going to make a bunch of steel in this area right there. And right here, we have a lot more uh, crude oil that is actually really cold and frozen. And I want to melt all of that as well. So we are going to use the heat right here that we are creating to heat up our crude oil a little bit more. And make sure that our solid crude oil down here on the bottom will be molten up. That's what I'm going to do right now. And up here on the top... Polluted water, we're not going to run out anytime soon. Because in our storage bin, we have another 12.3 tons, which should be erupting here very, very soon. But now our, our thermal sensor right here. Um, let's see, uh, current ambient temperature, zero degrees, uh, green signal if uh, below, let's say 28 degrees. Symbol reads are 22 to 37, if I remember correctly. So 28 should be smack dab in the middle and perfectly fine. Also, right here, need to be careful with our power wire, of course, because when this liquid tepidizer turns on while this one is running, the arrow wire goes uh, up in the air. Don't want to do that. Kionis became a supporter. Thank you very much. A new member, the second new member already after Ogen Gionis came in clutch as well. And what do I see? Unvalued tester, another level two engineer. Oh my goodness, guys. Ugh. You guys are amazing. I don't even know what to say. I truly don't even know what to say. I just know that I don't have enough dupes that I can bring on to uh, on right now for all you guys. <laughs> That's what I'm mainly concerned with right now. <laughs> AC says, I recently bought Oni. You are to blame. One of the people to think for it. <laughs> well, that's very good. Uh, Cly, take notice. Um, AC bought it just because of me. <laughs> No, just kidding. AC, that is a purchase you will not regret. You will get hundreds, if not thousands of hours of fun out of it. I guarantee you that. Um, it's probably one of the best purchases I've ever made in my life, when it comes to entertainment at least. <laughs> and the Destroyer of Worlds is here again as well. Like I said earlier, it's really nice to see... Uh, um, more and more people that are coming back. It is really awesome that I get to hang out with you guys more and more often. All right, let's turn up our speed here a little bit. It's getting, uh, getting a little bit dark in here. Don't like that. Ah, and a sip of the good old coffee to stay awake here and not fall asleep. Always a good thing. Eventually, you will have multiple colonies, every rock chunk full of idiot dupes. <laughs> yes. They do like to kill themselves, as we all know. All right, guys, come here. Uh, get this here done. What is my priority set to? Probably still nothing. Yeah, it's still set to normal. Let's do it a seven for right now. Uh, the nice thing is, by the way, if you go to any building at all and you change your priority down here, it'll save that for the rest of the game. So until you save it, let's say, and you quit the game, you come back, it will reset it to five. But up until this point, if you set it to seven, to nine, whatever it may be, it will stick around at that and that's a pretty nice feature just got to be aware that it exists because if you set it too high or too low for only one building yeah that can cause some trouble down the line but other than that looks pretty decent 
Okay, back to food. Hydroponic farms. Um, yeah, we're gonna wait a little bit. Let's build the bottom first, and then build upwards in that particular order. Of course, we need to get rid of all the stuff that's laying around here as well, rather sooner than later, because we need to heat this area up here rather drastically. Yeah, currently we are at negative 10 degrees, so we need to heat it up by roughly, what, 34 degrees at the bare minimum? Yeah. Well, I hope so. Didn't have time to play a lot yet, but I started starving my first tubes. <laughs> good. Very good. That is an amazing start right there. As we all know, if you have seen uh, my last streams or the wads of it, uh, starving dupes is one of my specialties, apparently. But so far, we haven't lost one. So far, that is, right? Use logic to turn uh, cut off power. Line for second tepidizer when the first are running. I uh, use this trick to have power hungry devices on one line. Yeah. Usually I would do that, but in this case right here, it really doesn't matter because this water in here still is at a nice 21 degrees all the way through in spots, even 25 and higher. Um, we don't need to run this liquid tepidizer here for a very, very long time. That shouldn't be a problem at all. This one here, on the other hand, will be running quite a lot because yeah, these 12.3 tons right here are going to erupt out of the storage bin here very soon. Um, and then uh, we have 12 tons of water in here that will mix with the rest of the water at a nice, what, negative 16 degrees or so. So, yeah, we will need a lot of heat from this liquid tepidizer right here. But this one here, not required right now. <clears throat> one other thing. In uh, the comments of my last VOD, people have been telling me that I'm an idiot. And they're most likely right. I installed this fancy mod right here that gives us this output right here and I connected it to a power shutoff. I thought that was the sensible thing to do. Turns out, well, it's not. The sensible thing to do would have actually been to do just this here. We don't need any of the other stuff in any way, shape or form. I had no idea it was the first time I used the mod. Yeah, that's what happens when you do something the first time on livestream and you don't actually know how it works because you didn't read the description, you just pressed the download button. So yeah, heed my warning. <laughs> Come on, give me the wire, please, and copy it. We're gonna connect it up like this here, and then deconstruct all the other wires, just so it looks like uh, some kind of professional did this. Uh, won't they spill? I don't know exactly what you mean. The, you mean this here? Will it not spill? No, no, no. Uh, 12 tons. We can see we have an empty space of 30 tiles, and one tile holds about one ton roughly plus minus a little bit so we have more than enough space in here that will not spill or do anything bad come on guys get this here built already Alfie wolf is here oops i'm late <laughs> no problem at all we'll be here for uh for a while so definitely not an issue and you literally have missed nothing we are just building a little area for some thimble reeds down here on the bottom that is uh that is about it. An incubator don't need power cutoff. You don't need to connect logic ports. Yeah, exactly. I had no idea. Not even gonna lie about it. No idea that it would be this simple. At this point, it almost feels like cheating. With the power cutoff, it felt somewhat normal. But at this point, yeah, it, it, yeah, it feels like cheating a little bit, honestly, this mod. <laughs> Elizabeth, yay life, also I completely took all the pipes out and rebuilt, work like a charm? Hell yes, there you go. <laughs> but now incubator will be on indefinitely if the ass doesn't show up to hug the egg, this might overload the power lines. Yes, that is of course another issue because it's not on a timer anymore, so that may be an issue. But we should have enough dupes and the priority number 9 here should hopefully work. And very very soon we will have more than enough... Um, uh, refined ore, or better to say revi uh, refined, not steel. What am I saying? More than enough. <laughs> what is it called? It's laying on the tip of my tongue here. Lead or copper, refined metal. Metal is the word I was looking for so desperately. Um, that we can rebuild most of our wires here, and the problem should be solved, at least for right now. Also, look at all those stone hatches right here. Yeah, we need to do something about that. Look at all this food running around. Why does it have legs? Okay, let's start a uh, second project right beside the first one. Right around, where do we have a good spot? Here? Do I have enough space here? No, it's only four wide. I need more space than that. 
We are going to build my patented critter killer. How about that? Right around here, we need a one nomadic door. Then we need airflow tiles, a total of three on each side. And then we need insulated tiles, a total of four low. There we go. Something like this here needs to be built more or less right away, please. There we go. I know, um, Croc, I think it was you who um, um, suggested a mod with like a laser. I looked at it. It looks fine. It looks fun. But if I can avoid a building where I can do something else in a very similar fashion, I'd rather do that. So we're going to build the automated critter killer right here. Shouldn't take long. It's a rather small uh, build. Once you know how to do it, it's, with mo it's like with most things in life. You know, everything always looks complicated up until the point you know how to do it and it becomes rather easy. Grab some coffee and the J, now I'm ready to watch you play. <laughs> awesome, destroyer. <laughs> you got something in the pod? I'll take a look very shortly. A translator translate dupe to ass. <laughs> you got something in the printing pod, yep, yep, yep. And now dupes are trapped. Dupes are trapped. Um. Oh, you damn dupes. Oh, you damn dupes. Always the same. Come on, build one ladder right here. Then they can move out again, of course. Somebody, anybody, please build the ladder. Cassiopeia is here for the rescue. Not all critters will die in water. Well, that's very true, but at the moment we have nothing that will not not die in water. So we will drown the suckers uh, like there's no tomorrow. We can dig all the way through here. Let's grab all those resources here. That's not going to hurt anything. All right, very good. Down here on the bottom. Before we do anything else, let's get rid of this stuff here. Maybe not with a nine. That's maybe a little bit excessive. Yes, I know. I could have built it differently, so it just falls all to the ground. Uh, back down a little bit deeper. But I think that should be okay right here. Let's plop in one more tile right here. Might as well. As soon as all this here is gone, uh, <laughs> gone. As soon as all this here is done, obviously, uh, we are going to make sure that we get some nice simple reads out of here very, very quickly. In the meantime, come on, guys, get it done. You know how. It's not that hard. In my language, dupa means ass. Dupe would mean the same, but if you point to it. <laughs> I mean, it's really damn close to the truth, ain't it? All right, let's take a look into our printing pot here. We have oxalide and we have three dupes. Three dupes. Let's take a look here. We have Joshua. Cooking, plus nine. Uh, cannot do attacking and decreased agriculture. And he's an interior decorator. Not really what I'm after at all. We have Harold, uh, decorating and supplying. He is skilled in plumbing. He's an interior decorator, and he's nyctophobic. Requires light to sleep. We already have one of you guys. Really? Do I need to have another one? Maybe. Because decorating and supplying are definitely two things that could be useful. And then we have Turner, who has plus nine in operating, but at the same time decreased machine uh, machinery, like, and cannot do researching. None of those dupes here are really that great, honestly. The best one is still Harold here in the, in the middle. We already have two operating dupes, um, two electrical engineers. By the way, I need to take a look into my skills while we're at it. Um, should I bring on one more? Does it do any damage if I do? Requires light to sleep. I could just plop another bed down there and be done with it, probably. You know what? We're going to bring on Harold right here. But, and now I need to take a look at my list here. Uh, let me see. That's right. Now I remember. Conan. Conan 44. Definitely needs his own dupe. Conan 44 gifted 10 subs, or better to say, memberships to the channel on the last stream. So if anybody deserves a dupe first on today's stream, it's definitely Conan. So Conan 44, welcome to the game. There we go. 
All right, very nice. Um, let's take a look into the skills. We have so many skills. I kind of neglected the skills you completely, if you ask me. Um, one skill here available. We don't need another art one right now. Let's go for improved caring right now for Conan. And then just go through the list here. We have Brandon. He has one point. Um, improved carrying definitely is not going to hurt. And a new hat. Cassiopeia. You also get the data analysis of researcher. Mainly for the plus two science. What else are we going to give you though? Probably nothing right now. Because you are going to be a 100% dedicated researcher. Um, whatever else you're doing while you're not researching. I'm not too concerned about. Let's go to Sin. Sin is already a mechatronics engineer. So that's one of our two mechatronics engineers. And I'm not entirely sure why I never gave you the appropriate hat. But we're going to rectify that right now. Um, we could go into this area right here as well. Into the exosuit training. That's probably the best thing that we can do right now. Especially since we are about to get exosuits. That is a good start. Croc. Uh, you have one point available. Applied um, sciences or data research. Probably applied sciences. That is more useful right now. Um, we're gonna leave you with this hat here. Just because I like how it looks, honestly. Uh, deer guard right here. Of four points. He is currently uh, one of our cooks. So we're gonna give him grilling too. And yeah, with applied sciences research. We are cutting it close on our morale. Let's hold off on that for a second. Just to be safe. Right here we have Alfie. Healthy gets super duper hard digging, there's no question about it. Uh, can't have enough diggers, especially uh, what I'm planning today. Oh, we are going places. And critter ranching right here for frozen hair. Um, you already demolition, that's very good. We gave you that last time around. We needed that skill really badly. And this time critter ranching as well. Gremlin2424, you are our main cook. Oh my goodness, you're only cooking. You're doing literally nothing else. Hmm. Let's see. Um, what do we really need? We have actually enough farmers right at this moment. Let's set you down the uh, more improved carrying and improved strength path. There we go. So you can help us because we have a lot of stuff that we have to do. Is Sin smart enough to wear the right hat? You're an electrical engineer. Of course you are. Or a mechatronics engineer even. Not only electrical, but mechanics and electronics. I would say that's pretty damn smart in my book. Um, who do we have here? I see Venom, Pyrotechnics, um, Improved Construction. I don't think we need Pyrotechnics right now. So we're going to go down the uh, Improved Construction tree right here. Definitely helps us. Let's see, Improved Construction 2. There we go. New hat right here. Crop tending and Improved Farming. And now we are a little bit high here on our morale need. But I hope it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Chemster, what are you up to, Chemster? I have no idea, actually. Uh, plumbing. Do we need another cook? I don't think we have enough to cook for like three cooks right now. I'm gonna hold off on that. Usually I just leave a lot of skill points unused because they're not that useful uh, for most of the stuff. I could give him something just like advanced research plus two science that helps him level up even faster. But we already have two points left over. So what really is the point if you think about it, right? We have Chim Nanny right here. Our second mechatronics engineer. Um, yeah. Yeah. What could we give you? Probably more strength wouldn't hurt. Let's do it this way. Killjoy right here. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So you have actually an affinity for uh, art. Might as well. Art fundamentals, aesthetic, uh, design, masterworks. Slowly but steadily making our way through here. Magenta. Grilling, Nathan Ray. It's getting really tedious going through all this stuff here. Thankfully, we have only two dupes left. The problem is that we have more than enough. Um, improved carrying. There we go. And with what? What are we going to do with what here? We don't need hazmat digging for literally anything. How about we bring you down the improved construction as well? All right, that's a hell of a lot better. Definitely going to wait for the edited videos. Unfortunately, there you will have to wait for a uh, for quite a while. That's just how that's going to go right now. Uh, do we have park nature reserves here? Not really. We don't really have too many plants around here. That is usually the problem on Rhyme. Most of the stuff just dies. Um, let me see. Do we have anywhere anything that we could use for that that is in a 
strategically good position if you want. Not really. Not if we don't make one ourselves. Let me put it this way. If we make one ourselves, it will look differently, but up until then, yeah, that's not gonna fly. Alright. Down here. Well, let's keep going all the way down here, slowly but steadily. We're gonna make our way into here and get rid of all this polluted water here. Uh, while melting this polluted ice, that is definitely something we're gonna do as well. It's just a little side project. Are you guys getting this here done? Not really, huh? And you're also not building. That's an unreachable build. Why? Oh, because this tile is not built. Okay, we need to wait for a pip and a glass tile then? Yup. Yup, that's exactly it. With a pip, we could definitely do some of this stuff. But right at the moment, does not really look too good. We don't really have much going on here. In that regard. Alright, dupes, you're starting to annoy me. Come on, get that stuff out of there. So we can get our symbol read farm up and running. Come on, dupes. Last two tiles, please. So we can keep on going here. Can we have power plant building? We could build a power plant. Um, probably when we have the hydrogen generators up and going. We have only two right now. Uh, we can have up to four. Um, what we're also going to do is we are going to get into this natural gas geyser right here, which is still dormant. How much longer is this thing going to be dormant? We might have to hurry up and get this done. Um, probably going to be done right after we are done with, uh, with our simple reed farm right here. So come on, dupes. Get that stuff out of there. These two tiles here are now built, so we can go ahead and base, grab us a mechanized airlock, and we're going to build three of them, not out of uranium, though. Literally anything else, what do we have most? Copper will do. Three of them on top of each other. Uh, then a right here, two mesh tiles, and that is all we need for right now. When all this here is built, uh, we will need to plop in uh, some automation as well. As a matter of fact, let me put all this stuff in. Because what we will need is buffer gates. We need three of them. We need one up here on the top, or one down here on the bottom, and one roughly right here. And then we will need one not gate. Uh, we will also need a critter sensor that lives right here. And in food? Yes, in food we need a critter drop off that lives right there. With two pieces of ladder here and there. Okay, that is all the stuff that we need. Of course, a few automation wires. We need to go from our critter sensor up to the input of our uh, first buffer gate. Then we need to come out to the knot gate. And then from the knot gate, we need to come all the way down to right there. Um, uh, right over here. That's right. I need to think about where we are going. And this here is the correct setup. So this top buffer gate right here goes into a knot gate. The knot gate goes over to the right side buffer gate and also down to the bottom. All right, let's see if we can make this here happen. So you guys can actually see how this thing here is going to work. Wouldn't it be good to make them oxygen masks? I don't know how it's called, but I think I remember seeing something like that. Yes, there are oxygen masks. That is certainly a thing. Definitely would be helpful right now as well. Can't deny it. Uh, but we're going to go straight for Atma suits here in a very, very short amount of time. Alright, looks like most of the stuff is built. Come on, let's dig this here out so the dupes can come up here and build from the bottom as well. Come on. Get it done, dupes. Anyone? Nobody? Waiting for lead. Why is this thing here built out of lead? Did I build everything out of lead? Well, that works. Thank God we don't need lead for anything, so that's fine. Alright, let's pick this stuff here up. And then, in food, hydroponic farms. All the way across here, just like that. Come on, anybody please build this one buffer gate right here. There we go. Okay. Very good. Now, we need to fill this thing here with water, of course. Um, to fill it with water, we can just do something very simple. Um, we can say, send a green signal if above one. Um, and then set it to below. 
All the doors are closing. And the door should now stay uh, should stay closed now. This buffer gate here on the top needs 20 seconds. This one down here on the bottom needs 6 seconds. And this one over here on the right needs 3 seconds. And now we have thankfully water very, very close by. So we can literally just come and build a pipe down here and a liquid vent. And then we're just going to fill this thing here up, up until the point when it just barely overflows. That is all we need right here. Still need insulated tiles? Oh crap. <laughs> I didn't notice at all. <laughs> oh crap. Okay. Alright. Oh goodness. Don't you need a wall? Yes, I do need a wall. Of course I need a wall, dang it. Want that delete water? What's gonna delete water? This here? No, that's not gonna delete water. Uh, having no wall here, that will delete water out of my system, yes. Good grief. Thankfully, we can have the dupes just mop this up. If it doesn't freeze before we actually get to mopping it. Alright, let's try this one more time here. Good grief, there we go. Alright. Now, of course, we are halving our water going uh, over into our loop right here. But thankfully, that doesn't matter too much. We're just going to fill this thing here up and we need to be a little bit careful. I don't want it to go everywhere, even though it's not that big a deal on Rhyme, it just freezes. So, well, actually right here we are at two degrees. I'm actually surprised. If it runs all the way over here, it will start freezing eventually. But yeah, let's fill this thing here up. And then we are basically already done with it anyway. Down here on the bottom in the meantime, what are we going to do here? Our temperature is better, to say the least. Uh, definitely better than negative, what did we have, negative 10 degrees, we are already at 11, 13 degrees. We need to preheat this area here just a tiny little bit. Uh, doesn't need a lot though. What we also need is piping, of course. Let's see, we're coming out of here, going up to there, coming, yes, up there. So this liquid bridge here, we don't need it anymore, let's get rid of it. Just as much as this one right here, we're going to tear it out. And then right here, we're just going to reuse the pipe that we already have. There is no need for it right this moment. Therefore, might as well reuse it. And then come over here. There we go. That should get the job done. And of course, this liquid bridge right here, once it's gone, we're going to rebuild it just in the other direction to make sure that our water goes where we actually want it to go. There we go. Trying to rebuild as little as possible. Uh, oxygen masks have two points penalty for athletics and atmosphere suits are four. Yes, very true. But we are going down here into this area right here um, where it is extremely cold, which uh, should help with our um, atmosphere suits compared to our oxygen masks. Also, all this water right here. My goodness, that is a, a lot of water. We need to get rid of all this stuff right here. But the nice thing is, it has abyssalite all around. So this is uh, your perfect natural insulator right here. That's going to work out just fine. Very good. Alright, how's our water coming along here? It's coming, slowly but steadily. Now in this area right here, we don't need a lot of heat. Uh, basically, nothing at all as a matter of fact. So in utilities, we're just going to utilize a space heater. And we're just going to have this thing here very, very briefly. Again, we won't need it long. We have insulated tiles all around. And as, as soon as we have reached a basic uh, temperature right here, we're going to start our seeds. Might as well do that right now, as a matter of fact. Assemble reeds, plant them. Uh, with a number nine priority. And then copy the settings all across here. There we go. We should have six seeds. And we're just going to get the temperature up a little bit. The water will also do its part. It's at 30 degrees. So, again, not that big of a deal. Very nice. Water temperature is already at 14 degrees. Very, very good. And now, radiant liquid pipes. That is going to be the key to our success right here. And let's see here. Um... Does it make too much of a difference? We're just gonna build them out of lead. We have plenty of lead laying around, apparently. Let's come all the way through here with lead. A little bit of lead poisoning for the dupes definitely can't hurt. I don't see a reason why why that will be a problem. So that should be all good.
As soon as they have it built, that was a little bit too low. We're just going to turn it on and it should heat up our assembly reed here more or less instantly. And as soon as the first one here is up to temperature, we should be golden. Gremlin says, sorry I missed the last stream was on holiday. That's no problem at all. I'm glad to have you back though. <laughs> all right, very good. Body temperature slowly but steadily sinking. Let's see if we can counteract that. Not up here, but down here. And the temperature of our water, 28.9 degrees. Just feeding it through here. Of course, that could be built a little bit nicer, but we already had it here, so might as well reuse it. No point in trying to reinvent the wheel here when we already have something in that should get the job done. All right, so the water is coming. Our body temperature is increasing. Let's see how high it goes. All we need is 22 degrees. At 22 degrees, when the water is in a steady flow, all our problems will be solved and our space heater right here will not be needed anymore. We're already at 20 degrees. Yeah, that should be just fine. Our water here is going up. Very nice. Might as well make sure that we get rid of this debris right here. Do we have any more of this stuff laying around? Only up here. Good. I love your critter killer. Used it in, in one of my bases. Yeah, that's awesome. In all of my bases. <laughs> it's a nifty device. It's a nifty device, for sure. Alright, two of our thermal reeds are now growing. We can see our water is now constantly flowing. And as long as it's constantly flowing, we are resupplying the water right here with fresh hot water. Therefore, a space heater, goodbye. Just a tiny little bit of power. It's just the most convenient way to get this here done in my book. All we're doing now is we're going to copy the settings to the first two. Get rid of this here. And then let's grab us our nomadic door just for uh, completion's sake and plop it right there. And yeah, now we have only one space. Screw it. Uh, let's put an insulated tile. And we should be good. Also, these here will slowly but steadily rise in temperature due to the water exchange because we are coming in with hotter and hotter water. Not hotter water, but at least at 28 degrees. So soon this entire thing here will pump out a bunch of thermal reeds here without an issue. Very good. Now back to the crit killer. How are we looking? 280 kilograms. Yeah, that'll take another little while right there. In the meantime, down here on the bottom in F2, let's get rid of the stuff that we don't need. We will need more wire already going to come all the way down here with it. So might as well do that right away. Uh, for now, the dupes have to uh, hold it out in the cold. It is what it is, though. In refinement, we are going to find us the metal refinery. And we're just going to plop it down here. And we're going to make this as simple as we can. Um, that's one of the few benefits of Rhyme. Because it is so cold, building something like a metal refinery in the middle of wherever the hell you want is absolutely no problem. So that is definitely a nice feature to have. It's at least one less headache. Maybe make a nice airlock to avoid air mixing with cold CO2. Yeah, we could probably do that. It just slows down our dupes from going in and out quite a lot. What's the bigger benefit here? Not entirely sure, honestly. Let's see, what do we have here? Uh, temperature wise, I mean, we are in a negatives. Barely, but you know what? I'm going to give you that one. Let's do it. Let's do a mechanized airlock. Let's hook it up to power. So we at least don't slow our dupes down that much. That should get the job done. Then down here in the bottom, once again, uh, we're just going to come with all ladders down here. And slowly but steadily, I want to dig all the way to probably... Yeah, right around here, honestly. We're just going to keep on going lower and lower. Because again, we have all this ice here. This uh, crude oil ice um, that we need to melt. So that is definitely what we are going to do here very shortly. That's lead, more lead. We will also need all this fossil right here, by the way. That is, of course, also highly important. Iron ore right here. Very good. And diamonds over here on the right. Yeah, that's a lot of benefits right there. In plumbing. Uh, liquid pump. 
just gonna plop it as low as I can right now because once again we are gonna go lower so our um, crude oil here will drop but it shouldn't really matter this here is so much uh, stuff again every one of these tiles right here will become three tiles of liquid oil therefore it shouldn't really matter too much so once again in plumbing we're just gonna plop it right there doesn't matter insulated pipe gonna come up with it and we're gonna find us the input and with a liquid bridge right beside here there we go another insulated pipe and then just right there where our entrance is a liquid vent and that completes the build just as simple as that well a little bit of power that'll definitely complete it did you rip it out yes you did rip it out make a nice airlock and you know what we're gonna just hook it straight up now that we can't do that's right <laughs> Do we have a power wire nearby here? We do not. We sure as hell do not. Well, not the big a deal. We will get one here very shortly anyway. I'm going to extend our hydrogen generators here. Uh, down here to the bottom. We're going to have a total of four of them. And we're also going to turn more of our Rodriguez on here very shortly. Um... Temperature of the hydrogen below the ladder. Uh, what hydrogen? What ladder? <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure where we are looking at right now. I don't see any hydrogen that is below a ladder. You mean right here, that tiny little bit? In the oil biome? I... Don't see... Oh, this hydrogen right here. That stuff is at 155 degrees. Nice. <laughs> I didn't even notice that stuff. Doesn't really stick out too much. That is a lot of stuff too. That's two kilograms. That's literally one kilogram per tile. Almost like it was painted in there. <laughs> I had sour gas everywhere when I dug near that fossil. The hydrogen was so hot. That's what you meant. Yeah, we can't go uh, into the Abyssalite, that's for sure. Good call, though. So I was lurking and was coming back to ask about Temp. Uh, still trying to freeze us out, huh? Yes. Definitely working on freezing you guys out, that's for sure. Uh, let's come over here. Just too high, or three high. Let's not dig too much of the Abyssalite out of here. The Bessalite is a very good insulator, as we all know, so I usually like to not dig too much out of it. What are you guys doing down here with ice? Oh, I know what. Yeah, our credit card is done. There we go. Perfect timing. That's all we need. And now, we're going to set our sensor right here to uh, Senegrin signal if above three critters. Now, it will take about 20 seconds. And this thing here will open. There we go. And the water will drop down. Now we can mop up these two sides right here. And that should be the end of it. Now we can set this critter drop off here. Let's take a look here. Two hatches and hatchlings. Two smooth hatches and smooth hatchlings. And stone hatches and stone hatchlings. With a number 7 priority. Uh, we're going to keep it lower than our actual farms right here. That is the important part. Uh, all these here we're going to set to 9. There we go. I forgot the top two, apparently. The reason is, if we uh, wrangle one, like these stone hatches right here, for example, and there is a space in here. What are you doing here, Hatch? Not entirely sure how you ended up here, but you won't stay here for long. Either way, <laughs> if you have a space in here, the stone hatch goes in there, and it doesn't go into our critter killer. So that's why we need to make sure that our priority here is higher than it is down for the critter killer. What exactly it is, doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, look at all these things here running around. Why are there so many? What happened? How many did we uh, get out of there? Holy cow, I was utterly unaware how many of those things we have. Give me all that food. Bring it on. There we go. Grab them all. And then bring them nicely down to the critter killer as fast as you can. There we go. The first hatches are coming. I'm gonna put them in there. Why is the water so low? What happened here? What is it? 21 degrees. 
What exactly happened here? Did I make a mistake? Let me check. Let me double check myself real quick here. On the bottom right here. We are closing it right away. As soon as we get the signal. And then we have 6 seconds on the bottom. Did I mess up my seconds? Yes, I did. Yeah, that's what happened here. This one here is the one that needs to be at 3. And this one is the one that needs to be at 6. That's the mistake that I made. And that should hopefully change, or better to say, fix the problem. All we need to do is put a little bit more water in it now. That's unfortunate. But yeah, that will fix the issue right away. We don't need that much only for hatches, but the nice thing is we need to, um, we don't have anything else right now, so it actually doesn't even matter too much. So it's not that big of a deal. Once again, right here, we're going to switch that over just so we can see how much we have in there. And look at that. Sin is back with another five gifted memberships. You already gifted five last time, my man. Are you crazy? Uh, I truly appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for your uh, continued support, Sin. You are an amazing human being. Not gonna lie about it. Unfortunately, you already have a dupe. And I already gave your dupe the uh, Neural Vexel letter right here. So I don't really know what else to do to your dupe. So, I'll find something though. I'll, I'll find something. <laughs> Alright, let's fill this here up with water once again. Once again, let's turn up the speed here so that it goes a little bit faster. I don't want it to overflow that much again. Send his chats MVP for sure. Give him a private bedroom. I like that idea. Um, Let's see here. What is this? You were drowning the hatch? <laughs> yes, David, that is correct. <laughs> That is a one, um, that is the automatic critter killer right here. All we are doing is uh, we are putting any critters that we don't want in our farm into it. It will automatically close and drown him to death. So we get wonderful meat out of it. Um, maybe we can catch it again um, and I will show you precisely how it works. Let's see here. We are at 700 kilograms, 800 kilograms. We are almost where we want to be here. Just a couple more seconds. Come on, fill her up. Uh, maybe a little bit faster. Come on, bring it on. Put it in. And now we are overflowing exactly as that should be. And now we're going to cut it off. And we're going to set this here back to above. Now it takes 20 seconds. We can see it in the automation right here. It is slowly but steadily ticking down. Let's speed it up. And when the 20 seconds are over, they should open up wonderfully, just like that. And all the water should drop down. And just whatever is left over on those two tiles up here on the top, you're going to make sure. Is this to automate butchering them? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is for. It's, um... If we have too many hatches, we'll just throw them in here. It will drown them. We get the meat. We don't have to do a damn thing. It's all controlled by this critter sensor right here. And the automation setup is actually very easy. All we have is three buffer grates right here. And a few uh, automation wires that are controlling those three doors here. Alright, looks like we have it wonderfully done here. There's oxygen. And there's oxygen, no more water. So let's do it one more time. We're going to set it to below. And let's see how those here close. Because the bottom should close first. Then the top. Or the middle, better to say. And then the very top one. And now that looks like it should look like. There we go. Yep, I messed up my buffer gates. Three on the bottom, six on the right side. That is how it has to be. And that should make sure that we don't have any more problems. A little bit more water is overflowing here. But again, that is because it flew back inside here. As soon as it opens back up, turn up the speed. There we go. It will do it a few more times until it 100% normalizes. And we shouldn't have that problem ever again. Very good. Another issue behind us. How are we doing down here? Our metal refinery is ready. Iron, 
to uh, iron ore to iron. That's the first thing that we need. And I want a lot of it. Here, it doesn't matter how much we make because we can see here iron ore 100 kilograms. And the effect is that we are getting 100 kilograms of iron back, refined, wonderful iron. So the um, rate for our metal refinery here is a 100%. Very, very good. Do you like to farm hatches more than Pakus? Yes. I do hate Pakus with a bit of passion, honestly. So there's that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they, uh, they are better now um, than they used to be. Uh, I know there have been some updates for it, but I haven't tried them since. But now we have our national gas geyser right here. We need to get into this thing. And for that, we're just going to come straight up. Basically all the way up. Doesn't matter too much. Let's do that right away. The dupes can just work on that whenever they want to. We just need to be faster than it comes out of dormancy. Closing the door on the critter don't damage them. Uh, the critter is actually sitting on top of this mesh tile right here. It never touches the actual door. That's why I get the metal refinery up and running by like cycle 15 or 20 rather than cycle 137. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, usually I'm faster than that, but since we're just chilling here and having fun, um, didn't work out this time. Also, we had to build a spawn and hatch wrenches. So there were just other priorities that I preferred. And especially it doesn't matter too much to me because we have another ace up our sleeve. Right here. Uh, this is an iron metal volcano. Alright. Guys, the iron's coming out. Let's um, automate this here just a little bit while we're at it. Storage pins, we are going to put in... Six, I believe, we should be able to cover, if I'm not mistaken. And an auto sweeper. Uh, we were even able to cover one more, but that's fine. Six should be more than sufficient. And an auto sweeper. We're going to plop all this here in. And we're just going to store the materials for our metal refinery right then and there. No problem at all. Maybe worth giving the refinery its own light bulb? Oh yes, you are 100% correct. You are definitely right about this one. Um, where do we put one though? Should be able to put it right there without an issue. In F2 we will also need power. There we go. And very, very soon, oh, there we go. Look at this. We already have our first reed fibers. Very, very nice. And we also got more seeds out of it. And we're still going strong right here. Temperature wise, yeah, 25, 23 degrees. That's totally fine. We don't need to go overboard here or anything like that. All right. In here, polluted water, we still have plenty of that stuff sitting around. Our normal water is still at 20 degrees. Still totally fine. Um, I think up until we need it again, we're just going to snip it off. We're going to turn this one here back on. It's going to be a while until we find more um, ice that we can put in there. Like right here, our um, polluted ice, of course. Because everything that we're working with right now, we're just going to melt it manually with the water that's already here. So it shouldn't be a problem at all. Let's dig this ice here up and hopefully get it out before we are contaminating, quote-unquote, our polluted water with normal water. That sounds like a weird thing to say, but here we are. <laughs> so I was way behind on the video, dang it. It should be close to life now. That does tend to happen every once in a while on YouTube, so every once in a while hitting the refresh button is unfortunately a good thing to do, but also a bad thing because I'm pretty sure you will get an array every time you do it. So, no, I'm not recommending this because uh, you, will, you will have to watch another ad. Uh, but yeah, YouTube is known to get behind on, um, on the stream sometimes. Uh, David says, no, yeah, I got the door because the, uh, there it makes the water overflow. I was just curious if with, the, with just the doors it could fill the same function but occupying less space. Yes, it could. You are correct. But the problem with that is uh, our meat will fall all the way down here. And if our meat falls all the way down here, there's really no way for the dupe to extract it. Um, we could probably try some weird stuff and tear out the side tile right here. Um, but, you know, having one extra tile here, is that really the end of the world? 
I think it's fine. You know, I think it's just fine the way it is, honestly. All right, Conan down here is doing a great job. Uh, Chaz says, oh, Gremlin. Gremlin also became a level 2 engineer. My god, Gremlin, thank you very, very much for your support. And of course, for hanging out here in the stream. Thank you very, very much. And Chaz says, I normally just go straight Francis Sean and keep all eggs in a water pit and rescue as necessary. Uh, I have to admit that, uh, that to be fully hands off, you need either mechatronics or complicated architecture. Yeah, I mean, completely hands off. Is this here not either because you need a dupe to bring it down here, obviously? I guess it's just a different approach that basically gives you the same solution in one way or another. That's the nice thing about oxygen not included and most of those kind of engineering things. Uh, kind of like programming, really. If you give 10 programmers the same problem, all of them will give you a solution that works. Just the path how they got there may be very, very different. Okay. Now, down here, storage bins. Uh, they are now built. So what are we going to do here? Metal ores. One of the things that I want to have down here is aluminum ore. We definitely need a bunch of aluminum. The other thing that I want down here is in metal ores, not metal ores, in refined metals, we need iron. Another thing that we don't have yet, gotta set that up probably up here. We want lime. Fossil to lime forever, eggshell to lime forever. Everything that can make lime will make lime. Uh, is that all that we have right now? Sand, sand, sand. So we only have eggshells and lime available right now. Of course, we don't have any poke shell molds or anything like that. We do have poke shells down here, but we haven't dug into them yet, so we don't have any molds yet available. At least the game doesn't know they exist yet. So yeah, that is something we need. And something else that we need is in... Is that refinement? Uh, yes, a kiln. And also the kiln, we're also just going to plop down here on the bottom. That's totally fine, no problem at all. And with that, we will get us refined carbon made out of coal. So that is the general idea right now. And that is the way how we can get steel. But right now, we're just going to get us more iron. And after that, we will get us a bunch more aluminum. All while we are heating up all this crude oil right here. Yes, slowly but steadily. At the same time, of course, we're also cooling it down <laughs> with all the stuff that is around here. Uh, I think we are holding a pretty nice equilibrium here. Is there a need for wolframite other than conversion to tungsten? I don't know. I don't think so. Not Nothing that I can think of from the top of my head. What would I have ever used wolframite for that was... Where I couldn't have used anything else at least, let me put it that way. I don't know. I don't think there is anything. If I think of anything, I'll let you know. But at the moment, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Nothing really. Okay. Let's take a look at our spam right here, because currently all we have running is two gas pumps and two electrolyzers, which is obviously not a hell of a lot. In the F7 overview, not the F6 overview. Yeah, let's see. So here we are cooling it in our water tank, which is a very good thing. Or better to say, heating it up, not cooling it, I guess. We need to come with these two pumps right here. Straight across here, we can come back out and then downwards. Because our Atmos suits are going to be living somewhere right here, most likely. Yeah, let's get ready for that. I'm going to get rid of this stuff right here. There we go. This one pipe right here. Eventually, we're going to feed it back into our infinite storage. And Croc Pro Player became also a level 2 engineer. My goodness. Uh, don't let me forget, guys, most of you guys are actually in the Discord, and of course, for level 1 and level 2 engineers, there is a special role in Discord just for you guys. So, let me make sure I check that all out after the stream and give you your appropriate roles. Uh, that is certainly necessary right now. Okay, but now, let's take a look here. Um, and let me pause the game real quick so I can uh, think about what I'm doing. Uh, can you get rid of this here? Actually, you can leave it there. You don't even need to get rid of it because we're going to build through it. There we go. Through here. Up with a gas bridge. I'm going to come through here with another gas bridge right there. Then right here, we are going to build the exact same setup. 
just like this because it works on the other side oh, why would we change the damn thing that doesn't make any sense never change a running system they say and then right here we're gonna come back out and then straight over probably all the way to right there then another gas bridge plop it in and then from here where we are exactly going i don't know yet we need to build it first but that is definitely the path that we want to take there we go all right dupes let's get this here ready for us just got car carnivore at cycle 98 game can now begin or so it feels <laughs> if you're trying to go for those kind of um achievements for sure that is most definitely what it feels like it's like you are not doing really anything other than trying to achieve this one goal right um, and once you achieved it, now you can actually in relax and play the game the way it is supposed to be played, right? You need some money for your vacation? <laughs> uh, yes. So, that's nice. Croc here actually read my uh, Discord message. Um, this here will be the last stream for two weeks because I am going on vacation. Um starting next week and i will be back on easter weekend uh, with another stream for you guys trying to do a 100 percent run of fourth game and fourth time trying damn uh killjoy says hi beer hey kill welcome back really nice to see you and we have and i don't even know caffeinated tactician that's uh that's what that's supposed to mean hello to you as well thank you for joining i truly truly appreciate it Oh, sounds like fun. Where are you going? Um, well, um, turns out that actually my best buddy from Germany is coming here. Uh, he will be staying with me for two weeks. Uh, he does that every year. Right around my birthday, which uh, happens to be in March. Um, he has been doing it literally since I live in the States, since 2012. So that's really, really nice. And this year we decided we are going to go to uh, Vegas for a week. Uh, hey, B, have you seen the new game published by Cly? It's like oxygen not included, but you have to manage a magic school. Yes, I have actually seen it. It was mentioned to me over the last two streams by several people. As a matter of fact, I have it pulled open in my browser in one of my 200 million tabs. Um, I looked at it. It looks certainly interesting. It's, um, I need to try it. That's the nice thing about Steam. You can just buy anything, try it out. And if you don't like it within two hours, you just return it. And that is uh, certainly a function that I use probably a hell of a lot more than most. Oh no, what will I do? <laughs> well, I hope, and I'm not going to make any promises right now, I hope that next week um, I will be able to push out a uh, some kind of content. I'm not sure entirely yet what it's going to be. Um, but I'll try my best. Yeah, I just know it's going to be a very busy week at work. Every time you go on vacation for two weeks, you know, they pile even more stuff on top of you uh, in the last few days that you're there. That's unfortunately how that works. Uh, refined carbon, we can see it. 125 kilograms of coal will be refined to 100 kilograms of refined carbon. Uh, we currently have 23.6 tons, so let's just do 20 of them. That shouldn't hurt us too badly. So we will have two tons of refined carbon sitting around, and that is certainly a good thing. Down here, let's see, has anybody made me some lime yet? Apparently somebody did. Very nice of you. Thank you, whoever did that. Did we get our ladder in here yet? Yes, we did. Is this here working the way I expected it to work? Yes. Our carbon dioxide right down here is holding the extreme pressure of the natural gas at 4.8 kilograms per tile, completely and absolutely at bay. Isn't that nice? This guy's are right here. I will send a dupe up there to uh, analyze it so we know how much longer it's dormant and we can actually start taming it real quick here. Uh, what is that going to look like? We're going to try to make this very simple. Usually I make the box a little bit bigger than it can be, but you know, what does it hurt? It's not like it's in the middle of the base or anything and we need the space for something much more pressing. The only important thing is if you build a pump in here, which you obviously need, it needs to be built at the bare minimum amount of gold. If you take a look at our natural gas vent right here, it comes out at 150 degrees so we actually should use steel even the gold will overheat here very shortly if we don't get the gas out fast enough um 
So yeah, let's wait a little bit longer. I know that gold works for a long, long time before it breaks. But since we are about to have steel, let's just wait a little bit longer. Put a steel in there and be done with it for good. Might as well. Let's get rid of all this here. And then, at least until we have our steel, let's build some ladders right here. One here and one there. That should get the dupes to where they're supposed to go. That should be hopefully able to build everything. Maybe not the top, but that would be fine. No problem. Um, let's see. Sorry for how long my name is. <laughs> it does make it a little bit hard to read um, while live streaming. There is no question, but I think I got it. I think I got it. No problem. Viva Las Vegas with the German engineer. That's the plan. Playing a management game for just two hours is quite a hard feat, though. <laughs> uh, did you ever play Prison Architect? Yes, I've played a little bit of Prison Architect. Not too much, though, to be very, very honest here. Um, it's a good game, though. It's, it's fun. There's no question about it. Also tried to do all of them in the last game, but my computer was too weak after 1,500 cycles, and I only had three left to get. GMO AOK -okay, probably takes the most time. Yes, the GMOs are a sucker. I don't even have to have one myself. <laughs> Never actually tried to go for it either. It's just uh, so tedious. Oh my goodness. I've been home this past week with COVID, so it's going to be a busy work Monday for me. Yeah, you know it. The week before you go on vacation or being out sick and the week after is usually the worst. Uh, yeah, the choice of uh, the choice of work life. <laughs> All right, while they're building up there, that's thankfully a rather small project. Let's take a look into this area right here. As a matter of fact, let me get a drink real quick before I do that. Give me one minute, guys. Let's see. We have right here already some tiles. Let's build them all the way through just to have it a little bit better crossed off here. And then let's go into stations. We will need, of course, an uh, Exosuit Forge. Need that as well. Might as well plop it already in. It doesn't hurt anything. Then we need a Atmosuit Dock. In the dock. Where are we going to put this thing? Are we going to put it right here? Probably. How many are we going to do? Maybe like five of them? I don't think we should need much more than that. And... Let's build an atmosphere checkpoint right here. The nice thing is we can always extend this here to whatever length we want to. It's not a problem at all. We need two spaces down here on the bottom. I like to make him out of some actual tile here so I run a little bit faster. And other than that, well, actually, uh, this here needs to be sitting on the floor too, right? So let's put in a floor first and uh, then make it two tiles and then put in another floor. There we go. In that particular order. We're going to leave this here alive for right now, but as soon as it's going to be as simple as just tearing out two pieces of ladder right here, the dupes won't be able to come straight down or up anymore. They're just going to come over to the right, down, and back over to the left. And that's how they are going to get down there. Just as simple as that. Always uh, trying to keep it as easy as possible. All right, dupes, how are you doing up here? Yeah, of course, Cassiopeia here is not going to be happy. It's actually Killjoy, who is at 40% stress. I'm not entirely sure how Killjoy got up there. I'm not entirely sure what he's up to. Um, I expect Cassiopeia to rise in stress here very soon because she is constantly spending her time right here in natural gas until she's done. So, yeah. <laughs> Mesh tile for a pea water and little pump. Uh, what are you saying, Croc? <laughs> Not entirely sure what you're trying to communicate here, sir. Less than half the likes versus the viewers. That is certainly a problem. Elizabeth is 100% right. Guys, if you haven't liked the video, do me a favor. Press that like button. It doesn't cost anything. And it certainly helps me out greatly. Thank you for that. 
Come on, guys. Build one or the other. I don't really care what you build as long as you build it. Right here, our pipe here. That one's done, so that's a good start. Um, how are we going to do this? Let me think about this here just for one second. The best way to do this here is probably... Mesh tile for pure and a little pump. Still don't know exactly what you mean, Croc. Kill Joy! I'm probably eating dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if they pee in the suit then the water will drop on it oh that's what you meant okay that is a good idea actually that is a really good idea actually I don't think I've ever done that but I also never really had that problem too much honestly but yeah we will optimize this in a second let me think about the um, F7 right here real quick we are probably going to come down here. We're going to bridge over to there and then build another bridge that's coming down here. Therefore, uh, we are prioritizing our oxygen coming down to our atmosphere suits and everything that's left over. Once this here is full, if it ever gets full, that is, um, we are going to feed it over to the other side of the base. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, let me implement the plan. So we're going to come down here, right to there, and then right to here. Just as simple as that. Here a bridge, which will obviously just bridge this pipe right here. And then this bridge right here, which will also bridge the pipe once again. But there is a reason for it. I could just go around here, right? What we are going to do is we are going to build insulated pipes. And we are just going to come with those insulated pipes back up here. And then all the way through there. Um, where are we going to go? Are we going to go up the right side? Yeah, we're going to go up the right side. Let's do it. Right here. We're gonna rip this pump here out in a second anyway. And then all the way to the top to right around here. And then right here, every other one, we're gonna come in. And we're gonna build us a gas vent. Not here apparently. Oh yeah, this here is actually still part of it. My goodness. Now let's see, let's do it one lower then. Right here. Gas vent. And cancel. There we go. So all the stuff that we have left over and this pump right here. Let's take a quick look into our F4 overlay. Yeah, you're fine. You can go. We don't need you anymore. I'm gonna tear you out. I'm gonna tear you out. And the pump itself. So we don't need a bridge right here. All we need is a bridge right there. Perfect. Alright. Very soon, this one here will be operational. That's gonna be very, very good. And at the same time, we are also going to pump more oxygen into our base, which should lower the level of carbon dioxide drastically. And as a matter of fact, let's turn this pump here back on. Well, I'm going to say 500 grams. Probably just going to pump our carbon dioxide out into space for right now. Very soon, we're going to stop that. And we are actually going to pump it into a um, infinite storage. So we can use it later for our rocket. How are we doing down here? We have 1400 kilograms of iron, 60 kilograms of lime. And uh, what else do we need? A refined carbon. There we go. Now we have another one. Refined carbon can go into right there. And that should be helpful. Our auto sweeper should then take over. And we are still making actually iron ore right now. All this here should be a hell of a lot faster once we have our Atmos suits going for us. That's going to be really, really good. Where to feed Slicksters? Yes, that is also another option. I don't think we will find any Slicksters, though, on Rhyme. Um, maybe on our second planetoid, if we ever uncover this um, very, very elusive teleporter. I, I still don't know where the hell this damn teleporter is. Like, where could it still be hiding? Uh, last time I said probably up here. It can be probably up here or down here. Usually it's not that far away from the base, so... Not entirely sure what the hell is going on here with our teleporter, but... Eventually we will find it. Alright, let's finish this here up, and then we have another thing going for us, because we need to figure out... Um, in radiation... How does the radiation lamp here works? Something I have never used in my life, because usually I always have some kind of radiation source nearby. Uh, this time around, we do not. So, we're going to make us our own. Um, 
just don't know exactly how this thing here works. I mean, I know how it works. Obviously, it uses 60 watts of power and 16.67 uh, grams of uranium ore per second. It produces a, a lot of radiation. But what I don't know is how far does the actual uh, radiation go out of this thing here? We need to be a little bit careful. I don't want to irradiate our entire base. All right, let's plop in those two right here as well. And then the automation wire down here as well. And then F7. Yeah, we are not producing as much as we should in hydrogen, so we need to turn on another one here. But it also doesn't matter too much. Thankfully, we still have more than enough coal. I think you will find it soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kionis plays on the exact same seat. So Kionis knows where it is. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. But yeah, hopefully we will find it soon. And by the way, I keep forgetting about those damn blueprints, don't I? We have been here for quite a while now. We have been here for an hour and uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, I think it's time to take a look at our first blueprint for the day. What do we have in here? Anything good? Of course. What else would it be? More bloody gloves, because that's what the world needs. More gloves. Ah, uh, uh, well, we got another one ready. So very soon we will open a second one. We'll see if it's something better than gloves. I don't know. Every time I see gloves, I feel like it's horse armor or something. Somehow, somehow that uh, gives me some bad memories here. Red lamp goes at least 12 tiles, depending on tiles blocking red. So in the open air, it goes 12 tiles? Holy cow. <laughs> Logan. Oh my god, Logan. <laughs> he literally has a glove emote. Oh god. Oh my god. Only three a week, resetting on Thursday? Yes. Um, we should have then two more to go. I would assume. Because we only opened one. And I did that around a little bit in the sandbox. Uh, so we should have all three already unlocked. Okay, more and more iron is being built. The dupes are doing fine. This here is already... Where is that one piece coming from? Must have been stuck somewhere in the pipe, I guess. Yeah, that's funny. All right, let's turn on one more over here. Just as simple as that. And then in F7, this here is connected properly. In the automation overview, though, not so much. So uh, let's build this over there. No, that doesn't go over there. What am I saying? Right here. That's how it goes. And then this one right here, we're going to copy the settings over to here. But... Again, in the automation overlay, we are going to cut it off right there. These two here, we don't want to use quite yet. So we have a little bit more hydrogen that is being produced and a, a lot more oxygen. Our four pumps here are more than enough, uh, half more than enough to do. I think we should be good. I think we can uh, recycle gloves for points and use it for another skin. If you don't like gloves, why don't you trade them? There is a way to do this. Let's see your uh, supply closet. How do you do that? Duplicants. No. All. Gloves. But you can get more. You can recycle them. <laughs> That's how little I do with blueprints. Now you know. I have no idea that that was a thing. We even have two of the same ones. Oh my goodness. So you can recycle them and it gives you points. And then you just can click on anything else like buildings right here. And can print it? No. Wallpapers? No. Artwork? No. Oh, you have to select something. <laughs> so each and every one costs 400. No, that's when you cost 1600. I see, I see. 3200. 7200 are you choking wow and if i recycle it i want to get 1800 back Ooh. 
What else do we have? Double. I had no idea that that is actually a thing. If I recycle this one here, does it recycle both or only one? Oh my god. Let's see what happens. I don't really care. Not like I use them anyway, so there's that. Because I would use the buildings a lot more if I had more. Just what the dupes look like. I, I don't have the time or the patience to worry about how my dupes look like. That is uh, not on my priority list on, on the very top. Uh, recycle one of these here. We have two of them. It gives me 1400. Any more gloves? Let's get rid of those. Footwear. Not 100. Atmos suits. Everything only once. I do have three of these ones right here. What does that mean if I have three of those blueprints? Does that mean I can have three in the colony? Or does that just mean I have the same blueprint double and I can't have as many as I want? Like, how does it work? Let's see. Let's get rid of one. Let's get rid of two. Wallpapers. We have two of those. I mean by the wallpapers here, there's no way that I can only build one tile if I have only one, right? Just double all of it. That's what I thought. <laughs> Good grief. So that's what they've been doing instead of developing more content. Oh wait, did I just set it out loud? Oh my god. Alright, now we have 3,800. What are we getting here? What's something good here? That looks kind of cool. What are you? A corn garland. Yeah, of course. That's that's most definitely what we need around here. A weepy blue water cooler. Click on the zero plus filter. Um. Oh. So when I click here, I can sell all of these here. Is that what you're what you're trying to tell me? I guess so. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. I only need it once. Why can't I even get it more than once? Wouldn't it just be a much better mechanic to just, you know, you open something and you get every time something you definitely haven't had before? I have more of these? Let's see here. I'm gonna get rid of this one. So that actually locks it. That's a problem. That is a problem. So I need to be on 2+, plus, I guess. Not 1+. plus. That makes more sense. Ah, well. Thankfully, I couldn't care less about this stuff. 7200. Uh, in buildings, where are the cots? Right here. So we lost this one right here. No, that's comfy beds. We lost this cot right here. But we care. <laughs> All right, guys. Which one of these here do you like the most? Let's buy one of them. I know we had this one here already. And I think we had this one here already. They all are of the same quality, apparently. And I'm going to make each and every one that we have out of the one that we that you guys choose. How about that? What's y'all's favorite? You will make mistakes for us? No, I just have no idea about those blueprints right here. <laughs> I like, I like that you're trying to defend me here. I just, it doesn't make a difference to me. Lab looks cool. All right, they're going to print us the lab. We have now one lab. At least now I know how it works, I guess. Let's go back out of here and let's find us our cots. I still have these here that I built earlier. I'm pretty sure I just sold this one here, but it's still there. So I guess we have that going for us. Can I just copy the settings? No, that would have been too easy, I guess. 
We have to go in here manually and change each and every one of them. All right, let's do that. No problem whatsoever. And the green ones, they just stay. So if you have it in your game and you sell it, it just doesn't go away. I guess that works. All right, back to the actual game. Blueprints. My God. Um, I forgot what I wanted to do. Oh yeah, we wanted to finish this here up. That's correct. In F7, we wanted to come down here with our pipe. And that was, of course, the plan. There we go. Claim your blueprints? I will. We are here for a uh, for a few more hours. So we will just do that uh, slowly but steadily over time. Good that they don't need dupes of work to change appearances. They actually just changed that a week ago. So far, that's why I have never ever used blueprints. Because you needed to build a cart. And if you then unlocked something, you needed to have a dupe come by to basically tear it down and rebuild it with the new skin. And I was always like, there's no way in hell that I'm going to waste time on that. <laughs> Later, you can use different cards for every level. Yeah, if we unlock more cards, for sure. Um, there are certainly things we can do. Like I said, the buildings here, I'm, I'm inclined to use those. That's not Now that you can just change them at will, that's a really nice feature. That is something I can get behind. Kremlin says, good night, have an amazing holiday. I will watch the rest tomorrow. Gremlin, have a good night. Thank you very much for joining. You know it, I highly appreciate it. What are the dupes working on right now? Definitely nothing down here. How are we doing up here? Uh, this here should be reachable. If I build one more, at least. Then all we need is a tiny little bit of steel, which we should be able to get here very, very soon. I agree, I'm glad I changed that. Yes, 100%. 100%. I mean, in my honest opinion, those blueprints were just 100% completely unusable before that, so... At least now it makes somewhat sense. We're still holding the natural gas in bay, and of course, our chlorine is now in a liquid state because it has frozen. Isn't that nice? Uh, our smooth hatches are slowly but steadily coming along. That's good to see. And our calories are up to 196,000. And here we already have a stone hatchling waiting to drown. Very, very happily. I don't think he knows what's coming. But I guess that's just part of the game as well. What are we doing down here? Yeah, we need those suits going. Come on, guys. Put in my pipe. We will need power. Power is thankfully relatively easy solved because for that we can use the heavy wood wire. No problem whatsoever. But they used to need work. Yeah, that's exactly how it used to work. Like you would have to um, build a cot. You would have to select your blueprint and then build it this way. So if you already had a cot and you wanted to build it as a different cot, you had to first deconstruct your cot and then build the cot with the blueprint you wanted. Which, once again, is 100% the reason why I have never used it. <laughs> it was just not viable and not something that I ever thought about in any game I have ever played. That's why I just always completely ignored it. While they're working on that, we will need this exosuit for you guys. Come on, plop it in. What are you doing? We will need power to this thing here. Ah, this wire here is already overloaded to the end. First of all, uh, in F1, our base looks amazing. We're gonna get rid of this thing right here. We won't need it anymore. I'm gonna leave the second one for right now, up until we have a little bit more oxygen coming into the base. But other than that, that saves us 120 watts of power. We don't have any algae, 17.2 kilograms, but we are slowly but steadily going to uncover, or better to say, dig up more, so that's fine. How many hours do I have? In the game, you mean? 
I don't even know. Let me check. Oxygen not included. Playtime uh, just under a thousand nine hundred and seventy-one. You know what? Screw it. We're not going to use this Exosuit Forge uh, very often right here. David says, hello, Beard here. I downloaded the mod Insulated Self Sealing Airlock because I was tired of doing these airlocks all the time. It's hilarious, but it feels almost like a cheat. Insulated Self Sealing Airlock. What the hell? I'm assuming it's not letting any heat through, but at the same time, it also doesn't let any um, gas through or any fluid. And it's only going to be two tiles high and one tile wide. Is that what it is? I'm up to 1100 rookie numbers. <laughs> I think you can take another dupe. Ooh, let's take a look here. We do have shuffle legs though. In the pipsqueak. There's no way that these dupes here or out doing a pipsqueak. Let's take a look though. Suit wearing and farming. Um, in the caregiver increased medicine. Don't need that for anything ever. Uh, a cuisine and food morale bonus. All right, all right, all right. And over here we have Ellie. Tidying plus eight, increased agriculture, increased decor and decreased bathroom use speed. I just don't see a big reason. We need to get this pipsqueak here. Uh, Sin says, and back. Hopefully I didn't miss too much. Nah, I just deleted half of my blueprints, apparently. But, again, totally fine. We're going to grab us this pipsqueak right here. Let's have this thing here running around for a little while. Pips are so handy. Yes, they're definitely handy for a lot of things. Uh, is it just sitting on the debris right now? <laughs> and I mean, on top of that, they're just cute. I mean, I don't care who you are. If you don't think this thing here is cute, then I don't know anymore. All right, right down here, they're slowly but steadily building it. Exosuit Forge. What are you waiting for building here? You already built a wire, so why are you not bringing by those 400 kilograms of lead? Are you telling me we're out of lead or something and it just doesn't show it? It says that we have 13.2 tons. So, oh, right, there it comes frozen hair. Frozen hair for the rescue once again. And then once again, why are you not building this stuff right here? Can you please, for the love of God, finish this construction already? Why does it take so, so long? Why is increased morale bonus a flaw? Uh, for what do you mean? Pipsqueaks are used for lumber farming, right? <clears throat> Pipsqueaks can be used for lumber farming. Yes, that's uh, definitely one use for them. But you can also use them, for example, to build your own uh, nature reserves. Uh, those things are pretty versatile. All you have to do is you find yourself a seed, like for example a mealwood seed, seed right here, and you plop the, kicks, uh, the pig squeak wherever you want. For example, we could just plop that thing into this area right here, plop down a few me a mealwood seeds, and it would just grow them out of the ground. That is um, the general idea here. And we're going to do something like that here probably very soon. in dupes. I mean, it's not a flaw all by itself. It just depends on what the dupe has. Like, for example, um, doctoring. It's just basically completely pointless and useless. Uh, no reason to waste any time with that. So if it has an increased morale bonus, but is good at doctoring, it doesn't really help too much. And in this case right here, the pipsqueak is just much, much more valuable. It's crying for its mommy. Sorry. Don't have her here. Alright, get it done so we can build us our five atmosphere, please. Really? There we go. Atmosphere, we're gonna build them out of copper or maybe not. Um it's 369 kilograms. Why do we have so little of it? What did we use all our uh, copper for? That is a little bit odd. Like pip planting overlay. 
I don't know, I got one of the farting puffed plushies. <laughs> it's stupid cues. <laughs> the planting overlay mod. I've never heard of that. Huh. What exactly does it do? It just shows you where it can plant, I guess. Uh, let's automate this here a little bit, huh? While we're at it. The auto sweeper right here. I was just asking what we are using all our stuff for. I guess we're just going to use lead. We're going to plop it here. And here. And there. Just as simple as that. We're going to come over with a few more tiles right here. We're going to go into shipping. And we're going to grab us some conveyor loads. Well, actually, before that. Um, don't be... There's a conveyor load. I'm just blind as a bat today. There we go. One here. One here. One there. And then with conveyor rails, we're gonna just gonna come straight over to right there. That was one too many on the other one. Straight down here. Over to the left. And then a conveyor shoot. Right here we're gonna cancel this one. And then conveyor bridge. Here and there. Just as simple as that. A little bit of power will be required. We're gonna take care of that here really shortly. But first of all, let's build us our first atmosphere, please. Really hate to make it out of iron, but we don't have anything else. Kinda sucks a little bit right now. Well, let's make it out of iron. Only one of them. One of them is better than none. And that one that we're gonna have, there's nothing else to do in the entire area down here other than uh, going to the metal refinery. So one of them should be a good start to keep our metal refinery running for a longer time. What are you using to make oxygen? Oh, just over here, a uh, little Rodriguez. Nothing, nothing crazy. Yes, atmosphere. One step closer to rockets. Yes. <laughs> you will go to space. I promised you that last time and it will happen. Yes, you will see it in green and when you hover over a tile, you will see what it is in the range. You can then dig up the wrong ones. That's pretty cool. That's certainly helpful. Ah, yes, the oxygen is coming down here. Slowly but steadily. Going into all of them. Yes. And as soon as this pipe here is full, again, if it ever gets full, what are we doing here? Oh, I never built it completely here. Oh my god. Alright, let's do this here. And then once again an F7, cut it off right there. That should get this oxygen here moving all the way up through our base. And once again, as I was saying, once this pipe here is full, our oxygen will not come down here anymore, but up and into the base. That is the channel right here. I love your tutorial on Hydra. It's what I use now. As I said in the tutorial, there are ups and downs for everything. So, it's definitely a good thing. The Hydra, I mean, I like it myself. Maybe we will build one on our second or third planetoid or something. Not entirely sure yet what we're going to do. Uh, but for right now, we should be pretty good with this thing right here. It's just a much faster, simpler build in my opinion. Especially if you have done it about 200 times or so. Definitely helpful. Of course, nobody is going to build if I don't increase the priority. That's another building that I just leave on 9 constantly because when it is used or when we need to use it, we usually need to use it relatively quickly. And the other thing, repair atmosuit, I always set this on forever. Um, the atmosuits do wear out and when they wear out, um, all we need is the one atmosuit and one reed fiber to make us a new one or better to say to repair it. Do you have metal volcanoes on this planet? Yes, right here we found an iron metal volcano. Uh, which we will have to do something with very soon here as well. But we are still missing some components and for that we need research. And to get that, we need our metal refinery here slightly more efficient and for that we need atmospheres. So, come on. Oops, what are you doing? Oh, you dupes. Waiting for materials. Somebody, bring some iron, please. We got the reed fibers. Oh, we had the iron. We were missing the reed fibers. Really? They're just down here. There's literally nothing preventing you from getting those right away. Good grief. Maybe it's time to change the priorities and sign in tasks depending on their skills. Yeah, may have to do that here very soon because slowly but steadily... It's getting out of hand here. Let's take a look here. In decorating, first of all. Um, new duplicates, actually. 
No, not like that. Oh, uh, we're gonna set it to disallow everybody. Only Kildra is allowed to do it. And Chempster. And that's it. Even though that doesn't matter too much. Croc. Researching, we're actually gonna do the same. Disallow everybody except for Croc. Cassiopeia and Deer Guard. There we go. At least that's out of the way, even though we're not researching researching anything right this moment. Storing, supplying, tidying. Where are our builders? Here we have a builder who is also a digger, of course, that's what? Storing, supplying, and operating. That's Chim Nanny right here. You shouldn't really have a hell of a lot to do, because I didn't give you anything to clean. I'm not entirely sure why you're not building. Um, neither one of you two are actually building. And I don't understand why, because literally there are conveyor rails that only you two can build. Very questionable. For Sin, it's number 33. How can it be 33? I don't understand. Where is Sin? What is more important, supplying and storing? How much can there be to supply and store? Well, let's do this. Let's set it to there. Let's see, does that make a different a difference in our... Now it's number 21. It's really questionable. Really questionable. Or is this here a building skill? No, it is a construction errand. So it should be building. If they're a building, you are low on supplying? Maybe so. Uh, priorities. No, we should have more than enough suppliers running around here. We have Kremlin here. He is only cooking. Shouldn't be a hell of a lot to cook right now. So he should be doing nothing but supplying. I really don't see anything crazy going on in here. Not gonna lie. Farming, building, supplying for frozen hair. Uh, looks like Sin got the memo. That's good. I wasn't sure if this one here was an operating or a building task. Obviously, it's a building task, but because it can only be done by um, mechatronics engineers, maybe it was operating, but no, it's not. It is definitely building. But yeah, Sin apparently got the memo. Who is starving? Chemster, why are you starving? We have literally 200,000 kilocalories uh, laying around here, so it shouldn't be a problem. Do we have an atmosphere? Yes, we do. So now we can actually give it a, a deliver command right here. Number nine priority, so that it always gets done right away. And then a deliver a suit to everything. There we go. And now at this point, we can go ahead and we can deconstruct uh, these here. One lower right there. And that should get the job done. Uh, dupes should not be able to go through here anymore. They are forced to go around here. And that should hopefully work. Obviously, we will need more exosuits. Uh, we have enough copper again, so let's build it out of copper. There we go. Let's build us a second one that never hurts. And the first one here is being filled up and ready to go. And there goes the connection. So the next dupe coming through here is Deerguard. Deerguard is coming down. Let's see what Deerguard is up to. Where are you going? Oh, you picked up Fossil down here. Of course, because that's important. Um, oh, our metal refinery needs a higher priority. Our rock rusher is at 7. That's why. All right, very good. So we have our critical ready to go. Uh, we have now more than enough thermal reeds and still more than enough, uh, more than enough polluted water in here. Still at twenty-eight point nine degrees. That's not going to go anywhere as long as we don't have any polluted ice. Um, we have right here our hydrogen generators, which are still running. Um, still a little bit low on resources, but that is totally fine. No problem at all. 
And now next on the list, we still need to finish up this thing right here. It is dormant for another 24.8 cycles. We have literally all the time in the world. Let's get started with cleaning this stuff here up and ripping out those ladders right here while we are at it. Very, very good. And then we are going to make us a little bit of steel. Hopefully that should now get down or get done a hell of a lot faster now that we have the atmos suits that we need. And then we can close this here up and get all this natural gas here out. Other than the pump, though, we can probably already put the infrastructure in. Um, we need a gas pump. It's going to live right there. Um, other than that, in automation, we will need a atmos sensor. We're just going to pop it in a corner somewhere. It doesn't really matter too much. And then an automation wire. The other things that we will need is power. And, of course, we will need also some piping. Um, for the piping, we should be able to already put something together here. Eventually, it's going to be a much better pass just coming straight over and then somewhere. Didn't we have a second one speaking of it? Yes, down here. I knew we had a second one. Um, I'm going to put both of those into an infinite storage. Where are we going to build this thing, though? Let's take a look here on the overview. We could just come straight through here somewhere and build it somewhere in this area. It shouldn't be in the way of anything. Yeah, we're going to do that. Right here, we have a bunch of ice. Yeah, let's do precisely that, actually. That should be a very quick process, hopefully, if the dupes are playing ball here. Um, right, where are we going to put it? It doesn't really matter too much. That's the uh, reality of it, right? We could just literally plop it right here, which is close to this area down here. That works. All right, let's plop that in. Just as simple as this. Yeah, not exactly like that, though. That is what we will need. Leave that open. Leave that open. Clean this out. And then in ventilation. Four gas vents. And then in ventilation once again. We will need, um, once again, gas pumps here made out of steel though. We won't get around that. And we will need to use as our medium in here. Not water, but we will have to use crude oil. Again, not that big a deal, thankfully. Either one of those two tasks. Yeah, now we are actually producing some stuff down here. Why are you delivering uh, the iron ore if we have a perfectly fine auto sweeper sitting right here? Don't we have iron ore down here? We have iron, a lime, refined carbon. We don't have iron ore. That's why. That explains it. In metal ores, are we going to say iron ore? And we are just having the dupe slowly but steadily fill this here up as well. Not with a high priority, because it's literally not that important. So it's totally fine. Brandon's back. And Brandon is already on the job. How much lime do we have now? Let's take a look here. Should probably pin that so we know. 160 kilograms. We're getting there. We can add some radiant liquid pipes for future use in the natural gas geyser box. Definitely could do that as well. Yep. I'm going to switch this here over to steel um, and I'm going to make as much as I can. And of course, what we have the least of is lime. So lime is what is holding us up here. What is our crude oil temperature, by the way? It's still at negative degrees. So yeah, it's the amount of... Uh, um, heat that we are putting in here is absolutely negligible as a matter of fact it's crazy so i would say right here this is lead here we have more fossil we are going to start digging further into this general direction right here down here on the bottom we have those spore kits right here i'm gonna leave a little bit of space right here i just want to get to this uh solid crude oil right here uh, once we touch it we will slowly but steadily melt it so that is going to be a very good thing and then over here to the right Hmm, how are we going to do this? Let's dig down first. And when we are down there, we're going to take care of the diamond. In that particular order. 
we will also slowly but steadily start making us more and more exosuits whenever we can. Um, let's build us one more. You know what? We have 2,920 kilograms by now. Um, yeah, one more for now. We're going to chill out on that a little bit. And up here on the top, now that this here is built, we don't need it anymore. We can get rid of this ladder. Jay is here as well. Jay, thank you very much for joining us. Hope you're doing fine today. And ventilation. You're going to grab us the gas pump. And now we can actually build it. Exactly right there. Made out of steel. Those problems should not be in the past. We just need to send a dupe all the way to the other side of the map. All the way from here to down there. Pick us the steel. Come all the way up the ladder across here. And, well, actually, right there, all the way up there, so that will probably take a second or two. Ooh. One rock is inside the box. There is a rock inside the box. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Make sure we're going to get rid of it, just for completeness sake here. Then while we are at it, in ventilation, going to come through here. And then how exactly we are going to get down into this area right here, we will figure out very soon. You're gonna wrangle this critter here right there. If nothing else, you will be a nice meat source. While this here has been built, that's very nice. Um, where do we get power from? Right here. Potential load, 290 watts. You're basically doing nothing. You're just hanging out. Huh. Let's come all the way up here to the top. And bring you into there. And into there. And also into there. Very good. I snuck out of, a out of a memorial to be here. I snuck out of a memorial service, but not for that reason. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't sneak out of a memorial service just to watch my stream. <laughs> uh, these here, we can already set up these conveyor loaders right here. Um, we're going to set them to literally anything with the exception of critter eggs. It's uh, literally simple. It's really all it takes right now. And then our wire right here. Now let's see. What will it show us? A total of 1,010 watts. Just 10 watts over. I would say that is totally fine. That is not going to cause me any headaches whatsoever. And slowly but steadily, we are just taking out everything that we have laying around in here. As soon as all that is gone, those here will barely ever run. Only when we get a little bit of coal, or down here. What are we having in here, actually? Copper. So when we get a little bit of copper. What is my hero? <laughs> Frozen petroleum isn't something you see uh, on that many worlds. Depending on the memorial ID, probably prefer to be here. <laughs> yeah. It surely depends on, that's for sure. Okay, we have one atmosphere suit that's sitting around and two dupes are running around. Definitely getting a hell of a lot better with our steel. We are now at 1,050 kilograms. Very, very nice. Slowly but steadily getting there. And also the um, oil that we are putting back in here now at 122 degrees. So that should slowly but steadily make a dent into it, you would think. Um, still not really a visible dent though, but we will see how that goes very shortly. And right here, let's dig one, uh, let's dig it down one more row. Actually, let's dig everything out that is not a frozen crude oil. And as soon as we have it, this one here, all this here should melt slowly but steadily. Just gotta keep in mind that each one of those one tiles right here will erupt into three tiles of liquid. So we need to make more space very, very soon. And probably, at least temporarily, we're just gonna plop in some ladder so we can get over here. And then dig, let's see, four high all the way through there. And then all the way over here, get this diamond out. That's a huge frozen oil. Uh, that's a huge frozen oil deposit. Yes, that is a lot of frozen oil here. Uh, that is a lot of freaking oil. It will probably, if you're not careful, overflow our little basin right here. So that is always something we need to look out for. Also, can't dig any deeper. We have sour gas here at a thousand degrees. Definitely a problem. 
But yes, as long as we uh, leave this abyssalite here alone, um, we should be golden. No problem. Uh, metal refinery is much better way to thaw than a liquid tepidizer, uh, liquid tepidizer at least. Yes, 100%. I mean, at the beginning, we just didn't really have that much of a choice because we only had polluted water sitting around. And I really didn't want much steam. So we just used the liquid tepidizer here very briefly. Now we have the metal refinery and we don't need the liquid tepidizer anymore. I was playing uh, Oxygen Not Included this morning. I have been working on Molten Slick Syringe. I burned through my infinite storage of CO2, uh, CO2, CO2. So I started setting up a local to burn petroleum and natural gas. Now I have way too much power and apparently too much, uh, way too much water and apparently too much power. There is a thing as too much power. <laughs> Need to work up the, uh, the courage to start on some big projects. Hey, there's always a safe function, right? You save, you try, you fail, you retry. <laughs> All right, dupes. Let's keep on digging through here a little bit. We're just going to come. You know what? There's nothing stopping us from doing this here as soon as we have the top part here done. So let's get these tiles you dug out and then we're just going to come straight across here. <clears throat> Maybe you replace the abyssalite with metal tile? Yeah, that is a slight issue here though. If I try to dig this here up, it will get out. The only thing that I could try is to replace this abyssalite here with a metal tile. I just don't know what that will do. It's only a thousand grams of sour gas right here and here we have vacuum. I should probably try it with a normal tile first before I go straight metal. That would definitely be an option. But also this igneous rock right here is at a thousand degrees. So cooling this here down, if I plop in a metal tile right here, these 1000 degrees are going to transfer into the metal tile rapidly, I would assume. Not that I've ever tried it. And right here we have a evaporation point of 400 degrees. Going to build over the sour gas to destroy it? That would be an option, but once again, I will get into contact with this igneous rock here at, at 1050 degrees. Insulate the shit or it will cause mayhem. Yes, exactly. That is exactly my fear here. <laughs> Trying to figure out what is the smartest way to go about this here. Let's see. We do have solid crude oil right here. That will melt. So we should be able to co corner build through here. We will see what we can do with that. For the CO2, should have just tamed one of my CO2 geysers. Yeah, that is another reason why I'm not concerned about CO2 in any way, shape or form, because we already found like one or two of those things here, so yeah. So really not that big a deal. Um, down here, our gas pump has apparently pumped out a, a lot of carbon dioxide. Um, maybe 500 grams here is a little bit too harsh. Let's make it 800. So it doesn't run quite as much. And here we can see it. we are a little bit low on oxygen, but that is only because all this space down here on the bottom used to be all carbon dioxide and now it's not any more. Therefore, we have the same amount of oxygen trying to occupy a much bigger volume. And that, of course, makes it look like it's a bad thing, but it will normalize very, very soon. Not a big deal at all. And this system here works exactly as expected. This pipe here is full. And as soon as the dupes are coming out of the atmosphere, it will go down again. And as soon as that, uh, those here are filled back up, no problem at all. All of our oxygen is going to go back into our base at a nice 22 degrees. Very good. Why the hell is it so freaking hot? That is another good question. <laughs> that should be the main question to answer, I guess. But up here on the top, let's finish this here up while we are at it. How are we going to do this? Um, yeah, lots of issues here, actually. First, we need the infinite storage before we do anything else. Let's plop uh, two of those in here made out of steel. Very good. Let's get all this stuff out of here while we're at it. 
And then we need to make sure that we are able to put in some crude oil right here. To put crude oil in here, we need to get rid of this top tile. And down here on the bottom, we will in... Um, let's take a look here. Plumbing. Pitcher pump. We're just going to put the pitcher pump. Doesn't really matter too much, I guess. Um, somewhere like right here. There's more and more of this stuff coming. I just want to make sure we are not accidentally uh, putting it into the polluted water. But that shouldn't happen because we're getting more and not... And not a less crude oil. We're actually not using the crude oil any for anything right now. Um, as much as we are putting into the metal refinery also comes back out. So we have a 0% net loss. But yes, we do need the pitcher pump. So we can get the oil that we need for this system right here. In ventilation. And let's put in the gas pipes in all directions. Something like this here. There we go. That's good. And then we will also need in power a little bit of a conductive wire. I'm going to build it out of lead. Melting point 330 degrees is totally fine. We're just going to come out into this direction. Not entirely sure yet where we're going to hook it up. Probably going to replace most of these here um, just with lead wires because it doesn't matter. They're not going to get hot or anything. So it is no problem with using lead for that. And then we need to rip out one tile anywhere. For example, right here. Extend this here out a little bit. And yeah, that should be everything we need. Very good. Let's see, where's the bottle emptier? The line is bad today. It's crazy. Get rid of all this shit, guys. Uh, you can use very cold CO2, uh, CO2 for the rocket and capture hot CO2 from the rocket start for Slixlers. The pitcher pump is selective. It won't draw um, polluted, H, uh, polluted H2O if they are aiming for something else. Really? I've never actually tried that. Never actually tried that. Never really had that situation before. Also not going to lie about that. <laughs> Exactly, Che. I'd be tempted to have them bottle the polluted water and empty it elsewhere just to clean it up. We can try that. We can definitely try that. Because we do still have this area right here with a bottle emptier. I can just say enable auto bottle. Uh, we have no um, polluted water anywhere else. Therefore, if they can get it out of here, we will see. But probably it's only taking what's at the bottom of the spout. Is that correct? So we will probably have to build us another one somewhere like right here, maybe. The bottom has to be touching the polluted water, though. That's what I figured. So, um, yeah, I would say there's nothing stopping us from just putting one right there and giving it a shot. There is really no worst case scenario here, so it's totally fine. Crude oil, enable auto bottle number nine. So let's get this here done. By the time they're here with the crude oil, I hope they're also building this wall right here. So that should be easy. And then in F2, we have this conductive wire right here. Um, we will have to replace these here because they're only capable of a thousand watts anyway, which is the same as this wire right here. We need to have the bigger boys. The bigger boys are capable of 2000. So that is certainly something we will need. But we can already just take one of the two and make all of these here conductive. Just so we are not going to have any problems in the future. Thankfully, again, one thing that we're not lacking is lead. Eventually, we will do both. And it's not going to be a problem at all. Oops, just have to rebuild it. And it'll be just fine. Very good. And then right here, we're just going to extend it all the way to right there. Anywhere along the root thing, if it's touching, it will work. So I guess I would just have to build this one here one higher then. Well, again, I am uh, way open to try this out. No problem at all. We have now steel around here. So let's grab us the steel. Let's turn it on so we can see it at all times. We have 1,450 kilograms. Already enough to build us a, um, a aqua tuna if we want it. 
And Gunnar is joining us. Good day, people. Good day to you as well, Gunnar. How are you doing today? So let's plop this thing. Let's just say right here. You could just see this here. I'm assuming one of those tiles here actually just uh, melted away. Very nice. If you imagine the rectangle, if there, if there is above a minimum of a PH2 inside the cells within that rectangle, they can bottle it. Well, those here are only 200 grams, so we would really have to get to this here. But as soon as another tile here melts, uh, it should cover the top again, slowly but steadily. It just uh, looks a little bit weird right now because we don't have enough uh, crude oil, but we have more than enough coming down here. Uh, what we also wanted to do is come all the way across here, so we will do that exactly as we said we would. This is also crude oil, might as well take it, very good. And of course right here we will not be able to get there anymore, so let's build one more right there. Uh, that should allow us to get to all places over here. Metal refinery, you should not be standing still. Um, can we make more, uh, more steel here? Yes we can. Let's say another 11. That is our maximum on lime right now. So let's do that. And then right here we have two more spots for suits. So let's build us those two suits out of whatever we have laying around. For example, copper. Very good. That uh, should complete this project here for right now. Over here, the morons put way too much in. Or better to say, I am the moron because I didn't pay attention. So uh, let's get mopping. And let's take a look here. 16, 15, 14, 10 kilograms. Well, let's bring her down to below two. Come on. 4,000 grams, 3,000 grams, 2,500. And now. Let's cancel it. And then let's see how much do we have left over here. That is going to be too much. We need to do it one more time. Because if I now close... Well, maybe. Now we need to do it one more time. Just for a tiny little bit. And we should be golden. Here comes Brandon. Let's take a look here. That should be golden at this point. Let's close it up and let's see if I'm correct or not. Yeah, that looks really good. Why is melting oil making me so nervous? <laughs> not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. Shouldn't really have any problems here. Let's build this pitcher pump here though. So we can actually test this here out. There are two more tiles right here that I completely missed. My goodness. Yeah, we are definitely not lacking oil. That's uh, for damn sure. I'm sure you have it under control, beer, as usual. It should be fine. It should be fine. 1100, 1100, 1400, and 1700. That is golden and totally fine. Perfect. That's all we need. And just clean the syrup. And then let's see, we need in ventilation, just a gas vent. There shouldn't be much pressure here. Nah, there's nothing. Oh, oh, an injured dupe. Where do we have an injured dupe? Where did I miss the injured dupe? And how did the dupe get injured? How many cards do we have? We have 4, 8, 12, 16, 17. We are lacking a cot. <laughs> I totally missed that we are lacking a cot. Let's build just four more up here on the top. Screw it. Better too many than not enough. Sin says, 62 people watching, only 30-ish likes. A wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Sin is 100% correct, guys. Please leave me a like. I would highly appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything, and it helps me out greatly. And while we're at it, how about we check out another blueprint? 
Hopefully it's not gloves again. What do we got? Anything good? We have mush diagonal. Diagonal stripes in alternative shades of mush bar. Well, if that doesn't sound amazing, then I don't know what does. <laughs> Once we build some drywall, we're definitely going to test that thing out. There's no question. <clears throat> you meant the medical bed. I figured that's what you meant, but yes, we still have not enough cards, but I don't see an injured dupe. Um, I also don't know how a dupe would get injured. There's really nothing here that can really injure a dupe. Hmm. Very odd. Uh, we have new printables available. Yeah, I know we are not researching anything. Let's take a look into our blueprints right here. We have shoveball legs. That's a good thing. Uh, we have Ada, Lindsay, and Marie. We have tidying, ranching, and suit wearing. Very good, actually. Suit wearing. Uh, certainly something that we need right now. Plus a 30% run speed. Uh, increased excavation. Starts with a tier 1 skill once again in excavating. Uh, decreased science, though. Decreased science does say negative um, research speed, but also negative 30% skill leveling. That is a problem. Um, cannot do building errands. Questionable dupe. Operating. Plus 7 machi machinery. Converts radiation exposure into calories. Cannot do doctoring. That here would be a, another uh, mechatronics engineer right off the bat, though, for sure. And then we have Marie right here for tidying and digging. Plus four strength. Uh, decreased husbandry. Well, how about I let you guys decide? I will take really all three of them, even though Ada right here has slow learner, which is not necessarily optimal and cannot build anything, which is a massive issue. Uh, but other than that, um, overall, not too bad. What do you guys think? Are we going to go with Marie, with Lindsay, or with Ada? <laughs> it's Antio says, endlich more life to buy. Finally, I'm alive here. Hello, how are you? I'm very good. How about yourself? Decreased science is a major bummer. I agree. Either of the other two. Can't disagree with that. 100% true. Shove bowl eggs. Eh, not entirely sure what to do with them right this very moment. Suit wearing and supplying are always interests. Any dupe will benefit from those interests. That is very true. That is very true. Never go wrong with more hauling. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I am kind of towards Marie. Uh, because we do have three mechatronics engineers already. So yeah, I think we're going to go with Marie. And Marie is of course not going to stay Marie. And it is going to be our first level 2 engineer of the day. And that is, of course, Ojin. So Ojin is going to get his own dupe right away. Welcome to the game, Ojin. And let's go take a look into the skills also right away. Uh, improved strengths. Gonna go for that right away and give you your hat. Uh, we have a ton of skills laying around. Most of them are just fine, though. We don't really need anything. We're also maxed out on our morale on almost everybody here, um, with very few exceptions. Uh, let's just make sure we are uh, weeding out those exceptions. Conan right here. He has leveled up. Very good. Uh, improved carrying. Let's go for it. New hat, of course. Killjoy right here is... That's why Killjoy is so unhappy. Why is Killjoy's morale so low? Um... Maybe he is actually eating dirt. I think Killjoy is the injured one. Okay, in this case, we will have to take a look at Killjoy here. A little bit of a closer look here. See what the heck is going on. Um, we have Chemster right here. We don't need another cook. And yeah, we can give him improved carrying. Again, hauling does never hurt. Iris, just slightly unhappy. It's all good. I see Venom, totally fine. Gremlin, Frozen Hair, Elfie, Deerguard. Croc right here. Uh, we can give you a little bit more science for sure. Sin is doing fine. Cassiopeia is doing fine. And Brandon right here. How about we gonna give you two points down this uh, road right here. And then electrical engineering. That's a much nicer hat if you ask me. Alright. 
I think Killjoy is the injured one. Where is Killjoy? Let's take a look here. Uh, Killjoy, Killjoy, Killjoy. Uh, sort by health. I don't see anything here. Everybody's at 100 health. Where are you at, Killjoy? Uh, you are lacking... What's wrong with you, sir? Status holding breast, rest. A lit workspace, a low morale, smell of flowers, stressed, pleasant chit chat, yucky lungs, new friend holding breath. Health 100 out of 100. I don't really see anything here. Why are you so unhappy? Like, what are you doing, Killjoy? You are farming, ranching, and decorating. You shouldn't have any trouble with anything at all. I don't even know what you're doing down here. Uh, don't you have anything to farm or to ranch? I guess you're getting yourself some food, but why are you coming from down here, though? I have questions. I have questions. I'm not entirely sure what is going on with him. He should be just happy. Just as much as the rest, at least. Doesn't really add up too much. Uh, let's take a look into our not sherm overlay, but the core overlay. I guess he does spend a lot of time in here, but still, though, that shouldn't hurt him too much. I guess now that we have reed fibers, though, we can go into furniture and we can grab us a blank canvas, plop one in the middle, one on the left, one on the right, and then into our bedrooms right here. Um, let's just plop it for now opposite of wherever we have our statues. Right here, right there, right here, and well down here, it doesn't really matter too much. Just so we have a little bit more decor going on. But other than that, shouldn't really hurt anything. Living up to his name at least? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you are 100% correct. He is killing, at least he's only killing his own joy. Um, as long as he leaves the rest alone, I, I'm not complaining here. Oh my goodness. Very, very good. We are slowly but steadily melting more stuff down here. Now we can try. Give you have a bit of light here. Let's see. I'm just checking temperature right now. Down here in the bottom. 1200 degrees. How do we cool this down? That is a real issue right here. If I go ahead and plop a tile right there, let's see what happens. Looks like you only have 16 mess tables and 19 dupes. That is another thing I didn't pay attention to. You are 100% correct. You are a 100 correct. Um, what are we going to do here? Probably very simple. And we are going to build all floors here, first of all. Once we have all of those floors here, we will rectify the situation right away. Also, pop in a couple more of those for now. There's so much cold that will cancel this heat? I don't think so. I truly do not believe so. The moment a drop of crude oil touches this igneous rock right here at 1.6 tons in mass and 1,241 degrees Celsius, it will immediately flash to sour gas and it will fill our base. Um, so yeah. Not gonna do that. <laughs> Here we have a random ass battery sitting around. That's interesting. Also, you don't really feel like building my, uh, or better to say, the rest of my uh, power lines right here. Use a poor heat conductor then? Yeah. I'm trying to come up with a solution that is somewhat safe. I'm just trying to put a tile... <clears throat> Sorry. I'm just trying to put a tile right here right now. Just to see exactly how that would behave. I really want to see that. Once it's built. 
Let's give it a higher priority and see if one of the dupes comes by and actually builds it. Okay, somebody delivered the 200 kilograms but didn't feel like building it. That's always nice. There's got to be a way to do this here properly, right? We have a colony achievement earned. What have we done? Oh, art underground, of course. I was like, we didn't do anything crazy, did we? So what builds it? And it goes up in temperature quickly. What we could do is, we could literally do this here. We could just over and over again, build a tile, delete it, and build it again. Let's see. Can that work? I mean, 800 degrees or 650 degrees is already a hell of a lot better than 1,000. There's no question about it. Obsidian? Also a good idea. Granite is better. He conducted an igneous rock. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to see at all if that works. But obsidian may be a good idea. Uh, thermal conductivity, too. Um... Let's see here. Yeah. Let's try obsidian. Let's see what happens. Again, there is no downside right now. We are just testing around and we are trying to figure out what is the best way that we can more or less delete this heat right here. This one here is, of course, heating now back up. It's uh, getting its heat from uh, down here. This igneous rock is heating up the sour gas, which then in turn is heating up uh, this igneous rock right here. So we are actually slowly but steadily getting rid of the heat. Question is, what is going to happen with this granite right here? It should be pushed out up to here. And it is sitting at 500 degrees. So we will see. Makes me wonder what the steam temp for crude oil is. Well, the steam temp or the vaporization point is 399.9 degrees Celsius. And it doesn't become steam, it becomes sour gas. Trial and error. Gotta love it, right? Come on, dupes. Build me this here. We should have more than enough obsidian laying around. It shouldn't be a problem whatsoever, as a matter of fact. More of this oil here is also melting. Oh, it's set to a 7. I need to stop that. There we go. I don't make the same mistake five times. You mean it turns into petroleum before sour gas? Yes, of course. First petroleum, then sour gas. What is sour gas used for? You can create um, natural gas out of it. I don't recall the temperature. Is that shown in the database? Let's see here. Petroleum. Yes, right here at 538 degrees. So crude oil, when it touches this igneous rock right here, 1200 degrees will still immediately become um, sour gas. Like, it will be so fast, most likely, that we don't even see it become petroleum. It will immediately just flash into sour gas. So now we have our obsidian right here. And our obsidian right here seems to be behaving exactly the same. Obviously, this is just a tile, not an insulated tile. But did we delete, actually, some heat? Like, what happened? Let me get rid of this stuff right here, and we will see if that stuff that we have here, like if I rip out this obsidian tile, if it then also becomes, or better to say that debris will be sho shoved over here, which it should be. So 500 degree granite is fine. Is it worth to tame if you have natural gas geysers? It really depends on what you want to do, right? I do have two of those geysers sitting around, so there's certainly a lot going on. Um, there's certainly a lot that we can get. Um, let me take a look here. We can get... This one here is not research. Can, of course, see nothing here. This one right here has an average out point 
uh, output of 101.9 grams per second. And when we take a look into power, we have our natural gas generator right here, and it requires 90 grams per second. So including, when we take the average output here, that includes the dormancy period, uh, we can feed more or less 1.1 um, natural gas geysers the entire time. It's really not a lot. <clears throat> Obviously, it's not going to be running 100% of the time, so it's a lot more than that. But if we assume that it's running the entirety of the time, it's nowhere near enough. No. Let's see here. We're up. Deconstruct this here. Screw that, just build a steel airlock and use all the heat to turn your crude oil into petroleum. I'm actually considering that. I'm not going to lie about it either. The only problem is where to put it. Where to put it without getting my oil directly into contact with this igneous rock right here. It's just a lot of heat. A lot of heat right here. I say as if I've ever done that, but I've seen it done many times. <laughs> well, of course, that is the general way. We have magma down here, so we can do that once we reach this area down here without an issue whatsoever. Uh, we can turn as much crude oil into petroleum as we want, literally. Um, that is um, literally no issue. But right here, it's just a matter of how to get there um, without having our crude oil touching it first. Don't be shy, dick, there's a bizzolite. <laughs> you just want to see chaos erupt. Some people just well, uh, want to see the world burn, right? Apparently Croc's one of them. You have to build a few layers of tile and dig out the vacuum chamber, then you make this heat spike. Yes, that would be a way to do it, of course. Um, it's just a lot of effort for this tiny little bit of an igneous rock right here. But it's probably the smartest solution, quite honestly. Is there a break in the abyssalite uh, near the magma? No, no, no. That's not how it is. It's literally just around here. I think it has something to do with this petrified fossil right here. I'm just assuming... Again, I have never used a petrified fossil before um, in my last Let's Play. I don't think they even existed yet in the game. Um, it just spawns like this, apparently. This one here didn't, though. This one here has some heat to it, but nowhere near as much, and apparently a spore kit. And shouldn't there be one more somewhere? I'm not entirely sure. I thought there should be four. One, two, three. Where's the fourth one? Huh, well. But uh, yeah, I think it just uh, spawns like this. It's infinite fossil once you dig out all of them. My goodness. Well, that's, uh, that sounds very nice. Um, remake the tile and then destroy the block next to it so you can uh, cool it down at the same time. That is actually what I am considering right now. That is exactly what I was just thinking about. I could just build a tile right here and then, well, if I deconstruct this tile right here, though, I'm back at where I started. I will have to dig out this tile right here. That doesn't hurt anything. If I dig out this tile, I can put another tile right here. <coughs> uh, sorry about that. Here we have a vacuum. So there should be no heat transfer from this igneous rock up to this tile, which should be perfectly fine. And then we have two tiles right here. We dig out this abyssalite, and that we should be able to keep under control with our ultra cold crude oil. I at least think so. We're going to try this, and if it all falls apart, at least Croc will be happy. Uh, how are we doing over here? Are we building now our our um, power wire? Yes, the power wire is done. 
our gas pumps right here have created a vacuum. That's very, very good. We can get rid of this gas vent down here then. Now we can go ahead in the meantime to build our insulated gas pipe and we can figure out what is the best way to get down there without killing everything in our path. Um, let's see. Probably right here, quite honestly. No, not like this. Not the oxygen, the ladder. We're gonna come with a ladder straight through here and all the way up to there. I don't want to dig just down here or something like that because this carbon dioxide is currently what keeps this enormous pressure of natural gas here at bay. And that is what I want to get out. So at least temporarily our pipe needs to come over here. That is what needs to happen. So let's build it just something like this here. There we go. And plop it into there. That should most definitely work. This year needs to be deconstructed faster though. And then right here, we have once again our conductive wire. And with our conductive wire, we're just gonna come along here. And we're gonna just follow then the ladder all the way through here once again. And up to right there. I don't want it to turn on immediately once it gets here. So below a thousand, that should never happen. So we should be golden right now. When we have all this here, then we can take a closer look. Because I am going to leave this door open. We still have 15 cycles to get rid most of this natural gas right here. Just need to be careful because we do have some chlorine gas in here. And we don't want to suck that up. So I'm probably just going to use a filter very temporarily here. Should work just fine. And then eventually we're going to make all this here nicer. Once we can get rid of this... Uh, it's not really a liquid lock. It's also, it's basically an air lock, I guess. A CO2 lock, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that is currently keeping our natural gas inside. Uh, idle dupes, did you deliver the extra suits to the docks? Yes, I did. Uh, all of them are here, no problem. Now, this one here has been dug out. Let's go ahead and let's build us two tiles. The question is, what are we going to do here? Insulated tiles are probably too insulated. Thermal conductivity. What is the lowest that we have? Here we have a 1. Maybe a 1 is not the worst idea I've ever heard of. That's mafic rock. Can't say that I've ever, ever used it. We're just going to try it. The thermal conductivity is low, so it should help us. Passive filter. G to win. <laughs> <coughs> Quick save before doing the sour gas boiler. <laughs> You're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong here. Oh, God. Let's save it. Not over saving, though. Save as. We are going to call it a lucky sewer number five, because this is episode five. And this year will also be the last save that we are doing. I am not planning on uh, reloading a save, even if we fail here, though don't uh, really how I play the game. But it doesn't hurt to have it available if we should really need it. Like if everything goes completely to hell and every one of our dudes dies because of who knows what, um, at least we have a backup plan. Our chumbo battery right here. It's probably time for you to be either deconstructed or relocated. Probably relocated. We're just going to put a couple of you guys over here. That can't hurt for right now. Then we're going to get rid of you. And we're going to get rid of the wire behind it. And then right here, exactly as it sits. Let's take a look into our decor overlay one more time. Yeah, now we're looking a hell of a lot better. Conan, why are you sleeping? Oh, you're afraid of the dark. That may be a problem. Let's put you down here. Croc Pro Player. Blueprint. We're just going to create us a new one. Straight through here. Uh, this here is just anything. It's, um, what is this here called? The Great Hall. And then we're going to use the blueprint literally just down here. We're going to copy and paste it in as is. Just as simple as that. Going to save us a little bit of time here. Very, very good. I'm planning on building a much bigger battery array here shortly, um, but for right at the moment, I'm just going to plop three over there. What do you use for the blueprints? They've never worked for me. Uh, it's just a mod called Blueprints Fixed. Um, 
Nothing, nothing crazy. I've used that mod for years, probably. Never really failed me. That's gonna give it a higher priority, or dupes will never do. I must be using it wrong, same mod. There is not really much you can do wrong. You click on new blueprint, you create one, you give it a name, and then you use... Uh... Oh, sorry about this, guys. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. Oh, you just click on use blueprint, and then plop it wherever you want. If there's already something in the way, uh, like we did up here, everything that was already built, it's not going to override it or anything, which is a really nice feature, or a bad feature, I guess, however you want to look at it. Um, only the stuff that is white right here will be actually put in. Game have blueprint, but with no save function. Take snapshot button. Take snapshot button. I have never used that in my life. <laughs> never once. <laughs> I only used the mod. <laughs> I honestly didn't even know it existed. Would be metal tiles for heat transfer better? Yeah, there would, it would be better for heat transfer, but I actually want to keep the heat transfer down to a minimum and do that as slowly as I can. That is a, a general idea. And now we should also have enough mess tables. Alright, dupes. Let's get this here built, please, and let's take a look what this here looks like. Oh, you are still getting rid of the uh, Ignis rock right here. It's still extremely fast. Oh my god. Frozen air, uh, can I get you to move down here and maybe dig this up? Yeah, okay, actually, you don't have the skill for that. Dang it, we don't have a, a do better skill nearby. That is not going to end well at 600 degrees. Hmm. What are we going to do here? This is not going to work. The heat is just way too high, and the Mafiac rock is actually seemingly heating up even faster than anything else. With the insulated tiles, I feel like it's not going to heat up at all. Because, let's take a look here. Um, right here, these insulated tiles are literally all beside temp shift plates at 96 degrees. And after so many cycles, we are still only at 48 degrees. Sour gas will recondense if you do it fast enough. 700 degrees, 500 degrees. I don't see this here going well. What if we try something different? Theoretically, if I put a temp shift plate right here, it has a radius all around here. It should include this tile right here. I'm just gonna build it out of something and see if it does anything at all. Let's see if that does anything. What about a door lock you can uh, open to stop transfer? Yes. Um, somebody else suggested that not too long ago. That is definitely also a... That is a 100% viable option. We can most definitely do that. I'm just trying to find a different solution. There's got to be more than one solution to this problem, right? There has to be. Come on. Slap it in there. And then build it. And then let's see if this here does anything at all. Because if so, we can build another one right here. We should see something happen or not happen immediately. Yeah, that made a difference. That made a good difference. I think we just found our solution. Oh yeah. Let's build us another one. Um, do we have diamond? If steel, where's my diamond at? Right here. Let's build this one out of diamond right here. F3 heat map? Sure, let's take a look. 
I like this try and error approach. Yeah, that's what engineering is literally about, right? Every once in a while, you can't find the solution in a book. You have to try, and you will fail. That is just how it goes. In the industry called lessons learned. Can't even see all that heat. You can see this here, though. <laughs> Now you need tiles with better conductivity. Yes, you're right, for real. <laughs> now, now I need steel. I think I'm going to try this. Um, we are going to put steel tiles in here. Or, not steel, metal tiles. Let me put it that way. Let's see how that goes. And by the way, our refinery here is not doing anything. Um, where's my aluminum? We haven't done anything but aluminum yet, have we? Or did we do that at the very beginning? I can't recall. But in base, let's grab us a metal tile. And let's see. No, we do not have any. Um, so we're going to 60, 35. Let's start low. Let's start at a 35. And we will see what happens. He has diamond. Tons of it. <laughs> yes, he does. Fuck around and find out. Yes. That is literally what, uh, what I call it at work, too. <laughs> Every once in a while. That is the best solution. Did I just make him out of lead on accident? Yeah, but it shouldn't melt because not this one here at the bare minimum. Uh, yes, our temp shift plate here is doing the Lord's work. Look at it. Yes, suck out the heat. It should go all the way over to this tile here, so all this here should be completely empty and freezing cold very, very soon. I mean, it's fine if it does melt. Yeah, it's totally fine if it melts. Totally fine if it melts. We can just let this sit here for a while. Don't have to do a damn thing about it. The only thing that we will need is... Um, now we also don't have a problem uh, with touching this metal tile here. So we can get rid of this piece of abyssalite right here. Also this piece here for all I care. And then build us another metal tile right here so we can get this here out as well. <clears throat> Let's see what this here looks like. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. <laughs> we need something better for down here, I guess. Uh... Let's try it with iron. Let's see here our lead tile. You are stopping and you're going down at 86.3 degrees. Beautiful. And now we wait. There we go. Much, much better. This tile right here, that's actually quite interesting, is holding its temperature to the degree while the others are slowly but steadily going down. But this one here, ah, it's going down very slowly, okay. All right, very, very good. Well, technically, you lose half the mass when you have to dig it out, but you are in short of lead and you have metal volcanoes. Yes, you are 100% correct. But this here, it does get the job done. Um, fuck around and find out. Was successful today, I would say. All right, save the game, go for it. Now our gas pump, how many more do we have left here? Not a lot. In F2, we are good on power. In F7, we are good on our insulated gas pipe. Very nice. The only thing though is, of course, we can't forget about it. In F2 right here, we haven't finished it. And at the same time, we have power transformers down here, standard power transformers that we cannot use. Uh, we are going to run out. I told you it will be okay to dig it. <laughs> yeah, we saw what happened to the lead. The exact same thing would have happened to the oil. <laughs> okay, let's see. We can just go ahead and deconstruct probably both of them just temporarily. Um, we have to get rid of them. And then we're going to replace them with large power transformers. And we're just going to plop them up here for right now. Also, this ration box here is more or less empty because these three here are full. 
Uh, we're just going to deconstruct it as well, and we're going to plop a three large power transformers here. We really need to get going on our power spine as well here. What happened to the lead? I missed something. I never looked away. It uh, literally disappeared in a second. Like it heated up so fast, it uh, has molten down in literally a second. If you blinked, you missed it. It was that fast. Let's build us a, a second one down here in the bottom. And another one down here. Well, that kind of sucks right now because that's right where we are going through. Uh, but that is okay. And we have two. We're going to come up here straight through right there. The other two we are not even going to use it. They're just going to sit here and generate a little bit of heat and uh, wasting a little bit of power. But we are not going to... just going to ignore that. Uh, right here, conductive bridge. Going to go through there. In F2, once again, we're going to rip this one here out. Actually, we're not going to rip it out. What am I saying? Uh, we are going to use the snipping tool as soon as we have the bridge. And then we're going to get rid of it. In that particular order. Right at the moment, a lot of things don't have any power. That is a problem. So we need to get this here done fairly soon, dupes. Please, thank you. Come on, dupes. Don't mess around. Get it done. Put up the speed a little bit here. We need to get our power back ASAP. Alright, this here is now working, which means we can snip this, snip that, and then come with a, another conductive wire just straight over to here. Which then means we can get rid of all of this stuff right here. We don't need it. Don't need this. Don't need any of that. Any of this here. All of this here can get deconstructed without an issue. No problem at all. And then this one right here. We are going to bring all the way down to the bottom. And all the way into there. There we go. Two more pieces to get rid of. And we are golden. Very good. That's how that should look like. I just need to build those last few ones here. Come on, dupes. Get it done. And we have two more large power transformers available once we need them. But at the moment, we are okay the way we are. And eventually we're going to rip all of this here out. Again, this is a temporary solution and not quote-unquote the solution. That is always important to note. And this is always a, a very important concept in Oxygen included all by itself. That anything you build doesn't have to be permanent. And you, that is important, especially for new players to keep in mind. Just because you plopped it down does not mean that is what it has to look like forever. Alright, we are looking good now. Uh, in F7 right here. Very, very nice. Um, just for safety's sake. And again, it will cost us a little bit of power. I could pull the mechanical filter or 15 other things, but it's just so much easier to build us. Not this. Come on. In O, of course, a filter right around here. Let's see. Let's turn this thing around to something like this here. Uh, I'm going to put it right there. In F7, come out, back over and back out. Yes, went right here. And then, of course, can't forget to snip this here. As soon as that's done, we are ready to roll to transfer that natural gas out of there. We're going to get rid of the entire thing once most of this natural gas here is actually gone. Uh, that's the entire purpose of the setup here. Once again, extremely temporary. This one here we're going to set up to unbreathable gas, natural gas. And done. Little bit of power, guys. Come on. There is chlorine in there. Yes, that's exactly what I'm worried about. Right there, we have chlorine gas. And eventually, once the pressure here lowers off the natural gas, it will uh, increase down here. In F4, we can see it. We have our carbon dioxide. It will eventually seep up there. So, time to turn this thing here on. Now we're going to say about 500 grams. And let's get pumping. 
This thing here is still dormant for 12.3 cycles, so we don't have a problem here whatsoever. Alright, our natural gas is coming through. Let's turn up the speed. There we have it. And that is exactly what that should look like. Just as simple as that. And now we just pump and pump and pump until all the crap is gone up here and we are golden. Then we can also start slowly but steadily to rebuild this here and pull up out a few more gas generators or our first gas generators actually. That should be good. Did you already analyze the geyser? I just read it's two generators per geyser. Uh, yes, I did. <coughs> right here, you can see it. It has an average output, and this includes its dormant period of 101.9 grams per second. So, if you consider that a gas generator is, run, uh, is going to run 100% of the time, which it isn't in real life, obviously that's not going to happen. Um, but if it would to be running 100% uh, of the time, it could not um, sustain two of them. That's a crappy geyser? Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> I propose to build a second pump there and seal now the box. I don't see really a reason for it, honestly. We have plenty of time. And if we have to seal it prematurely, we can always build a second pump then. But for right now, that's totally fine. Alright. Down here, we are still making aluminum. Very, very good. So, I think it is time to mess around. I wanted to do this actually a long time ago, but then we get got held up by this here. Let's take another look here. On to a thousand degrees, 200 degrees. Yeah, it's just a question of time. She's coming down, she's coming down. No problems. Um, that we mess around in radiation with this radiation lamp. What did you guys say? 12 tiles. It is a long freaking way though. Holy cow. Hmm. So we need quite a lot of space for this build. How long is this here? 26 tiles. That would be more than sufficient. We need to make sure that the rat holes don't hit the dupes. We need to make sure that the radiation doesn't kill the dupes. <clears throat> so there's a lot to think about here. Uh, but we're just going to build it in this area. There are no geysers or anything nearby that we will interrupt. So that's totally fine for a little testing area. Uh, what are we going to build though? Um, that's the bigger question. We have, we will need a box, quite obviously. Does anybody know how far it goes up and down, or better to say sideways from its middle point? That would also be a good information to have. If nobody knows, that's fine. We will just try it out. We are gonna come along here with its leaded tiles all the way through here. That may be way too big what I'm building right now. But again, there's only one way to find out if you don't know the answer and you are too lazy to Google it or just don't want to because it's much more fun to find it out yourself. So let's see what we can do with something like this here. The last time I played Spaced Out, radiation wasn't introduced to it. It fans out 1-3. I'm just gonna build one. Just gonna slap it right here. Uh, we're gonna come with our power wire just straight through the wall right here. And we will see what the hell it actually looks like. And then we will go from there. One step after the next. You are correct. I keep forgetting about it. Let's dig it all the way through right there. Um, Croc says, build the floor after you dig it. So we will do precisely that. As a matter of fact, we cannot yet dig it or we will not be able to. So let's do this here first, then dig the bottom out, and then dig the middle out, and then plop in the floor. In that order. Do, deeps, uh, do dupes that emit radiation themselves also receive damage when they are hit by radioactivity? I'm assuming so, yes. Not that I've ever tried it or paid any attention to it, but I would be highly surprised if not. Oh, they already built a lamp. Yeah, I must have built it through the corner or before the wall was built. That's actually hilarious. Alright, dupes. Let's build our uh, roof here first. And then once we have the roof, we're going to start digging into the middle. 
Cassiopeia is asking for a friend. <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> oh. I'm half dying over here, guys. Uh, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I don't know what kind of buck got me, but got to be something going around there. I just turned the speed down ago. It just got me a drink real quick. You guys didn't even notice. It's the benefit of not having a camera. <laughs> sure am. Yes for a friend. That's right. You need a tile or a ladder on the right? Uh. Yeah, you're right. Of course. Now the dupes have to walk all the way around here to actually get there. That is... Uh, Red is suboptimal. Can't deny it. Cannot deny it. But Sin seems to be taking care of it. Very good. Guys, just as a friendly reminder, we currently have 69 viewers. Yes, of course, 69. One of our favorite numbers, as usual. Um, but we only have 48 likes. So, if you guys would be so good and leave a like on this stream, I would highly appreciate it. It doesn't cost a damn thing, and it helps me out greatly. Thank you very much. Nice, nice, prost. Uh, what you're hearing is unfortunately not a beer. It's a Red Bull. But, it works. Sixty-nine likes would be nice and optimal. That is one hundred percent correct. Um, I've been told it's one of the most optimal numbers. Very efficient. <laughs> Very efficient indeed. <laughs> Come on. Dig in there. Get it done. I just want to see how much radiation that thing throws out. Because we do have 2300 uh, kilograms worth of uranium, and this thing here uses, what, 16.67 grams per second, so we should be fine for a good amount of time here. And it only uses 60 watts of power. That is negligible. It's totally fine. No problem at all. And right here, how are we looking? Natural gas made it all the way down here. This year, I'm actually going to set above a zero now. Uh, so this thing here just runs and runs and runs and sucks out more natural gas. But we still have 10 cycles left. Yeah, that's plenty. No problem. All right, we have a Watt, Mathan, and... Uh, who else do we have here? Elfie. Elfie's out another hard digger. There we go. No, no, we need 420 likes. I mean, if we go that far, we might as well go to 69,420. Wait, not sure that's possible. <laughs> About alcohol, today I tried my first mead. As in first mead I made. Oh, you made your own. That's awesome. It was acceptable. And I cannot wait for it to be ready to bottle. <laughs> That's really cool, though, that you make your own meat. I used to try uh, home brewing once. Turns out I'm a better beer drinker than I'm a beer maker, so there's that. Alright, now we can rip out this entire floor here. We don't need it anymore. And then we're going to replace it with insulated towels. And then we will see what exact construction we have to build here to make sure that our dupes are safe and at the same time we can get some um, um, research done, of course. But still, I'm looking very much forward to seeing uh, what this radiation lamp here has in store for us. And oh my god, 
Cassiopeia, you are completely nuts. 20 euros. Are you serious? Thank you so, so much. Uh, guys, that is really not necessarily. I truly appreciate it, of course, but still, though. I'm just happy that you guys are here and hanging out with me. Well, Cassiopeia, thank you. Thank you from the deepest parts of my heart. Thank you. Maybe put some automation on the lamp. Usually, I do like to put um, radiation uh, automation on it, but if I'm actually working on something, uh, we got the old pliers here. I should be able to turn it on and off whenever I want. Eventually, I want to put some automation on it. What can it even do? Let's take a look here. It has just an input that enables and disables it. There gotta be a better thing, right? There gotta be something that we can uh, figure out here so we are not constantly have it running or something along those lines. Again, I have no idea yet. We need to see what it exactly does. And then we will go from there. Trial and error. Once again, we have been very good uh, with trial and error at the stream so far, so... Let's see if he can keep the streak going, I guess. For your test, I would leave the block right under the light empty and have a ladder below so they can feed the lamp from below. That is actually very smart. <laughs> because if it just comes in here, the dukes have to run all the way along here. Yeah, I didn't consider that. Somehow there has to get material in there, right? Um, so let's put one right there that should get the job done. And let's see. Come on, guys. Uh, put me a tiny little bit of um, power on there. That would be a good start here. Do it. You can reach it from any direction you feel like. Come on. Okay, now... Let's see. Somebody bring me some uranium. Please. Oops, are idling around. You really have nothing to do. Um, if you have nothing to do, or if you think you have nothing to do, there's always something to clean. Always. So if you have nothing else to do, pick this stuff up. But that has been a low 5 priority, so hopefully it shouldn't prevent us from doing anything else. Where is my uranium? That is on a number 9 priority. There comes Chimster. Okay, so the lamp just turned on. And holy cow. 705 reds in the front position. 645 in the second. 587 in the third. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of radiation. And it stops right here. So right here, before we do anything else, we're going to put in a door. And we're going to say, uh, we just got to lock those doors here completely for now. Well, not lock it. Let's think about it for a second. In radiation, we have to wrap out generators. The wrap out generators are... Let's just plop in like two of them for right now. And then we have a red bolt reflector right here. We could put the reflector probably somewhere up here and have it fire through there. Wasn't there one? Do we have to research that one? Uh, that goes through a, a wall? That would be actually perfect right now. Where would that be? Because I have no idea what the hell it's called. So that's not helpful. Where would you be? If I would be a thing that shoots a red bolt through a wall, where would I hide? Probably down here somewhere. I use red bows on the first two and get 100 red bows in 0.67 cycles and then a lead backstop behind them. That is kind of something that I'm thinking about. But I'm still looking for... Let's see here. Um, let's find the research reactor. It's right here. No, don't do that. Uh, red bow containment. That is not what I'm looking for. Oh, it is actually right here. The red bolt joint plate is what I was thinking of. Literally, it's that far down in the tree? I had no idea. Oh my god. Okay. 
All right, gotta come up with a different solution then. A red bolt reflector. <clears throat> Reactor has the red bolt trunk plate. Yeah, we just found it, but I just didn't think it was that far down in the tree. Not gonna lie. Um, right here. We are just gonna build one somewhere up here. Another one up there. And then we are going to go to stations, research, the material study terminal. And we are going to put it right there. Then we need one more that collects it all. It's not gonna work, unfortunately, though. We need to build this here, unfortunately. One further over. You're gonna plop this one right here. And that one can then directly put it in there. Because I will need one more tile right here. That should work. Um, the only problem is the dupes can still theoretically go in here, but they don't ever have a reason to do so, theoretically. So why would they? This pneumatic door here, I'm just going to lock completely. No dupe should ever go through it. These two shoot to this red old reflector, which will bring it up to here, over to there, and into there. That is the idea right now. Take your second rat bolt and turn it 90 degrees, then both rat bolts can fire upward, and then two tiles of lead, then, re then research reactor. Uh, can do it from the top also. Oh yeah, you're right, I can do it from the top. I can literally just take this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna build it one further over in its original position. Then right here. Bring this one downwards. First it needs to be built. And of course, I don't want to... Uh, Get my dupes here six, so let's turn the power off and let's have him build this stuff right here. We will need also a hell of a lot of power. One of those things here needs, what, 480 watts, if I'm not mistaken. So we may have to utilize one fresh um, 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 large power transformer right here. Thankfully, we have plenty of them sitting around right now. By design, of course. So that works. Um, once again, temporarily, let's bring up another one. Probably, let's see how we're gonna do this. Let me think about it for a second. We can come through here. Fortunately, we have two wires right there. We can always bring it downwards and then over. That's what we're gonna do. Yep, right here. Right here, we're gonna come up. We're gonna bring it actually right into there. Uh, and once it's in there, we're just gonna power all this stuff here off the same wire. We're gonna cut it off right there and make a new one. There we go. That's how we're gonna do this. Gonna pull up it right there. Our conductive wire bridge right here. Gonna have one right here and another one right there. And then we need another wire that comes over to there. Just as simple as that. Uh, to stop dupes, lower ladder one tile and then put a tile on the insulate. Uh, you mean right here? Then it's too high for the dupes to jump. They will keep them out of the chamber. But I still want him to be able to um, feed this here. Well, actually, what prevents me? Does anything at all prevent me from just putting the ladder right here? And just having this one here deconstructed. Cling, uh, not cleaning it up. <laughs> Closing this one here up. And then feeding it from the back. Yeah, that should be a much better idea, actually. You will have space for a second building and create a lab. Um, is it? 92? Yeah, you're right. We can put another building in here. Uh, just so we have it. The lamp needs to be mounted on the wall. Damn it. Uh, in that case, why don't we just air this one out, build the ladder right there so they can feed it through here. Shouldn't that work? Let's see if that works. In F2, now we can bring this power wire here. Actually, this power wire right here, we're just going to come straight through here. What is going to stop us? Precisely nothing, and that's a good thing. And then we're going to come with this wire straight over and power this one right there. Very, very nice. We will also need in utilities, not in utilities, in furniture, a ceiling lamp. Going to plop it right there and bring it up. 
And then let's take a look into our room overlay, a laboratory, two science buildings, a light source, no industrial machinery, and less than 120 tiles. We are fulfilling all of those, other than having a second science building, and we're just going to build the cheapest one without ever intending to use it right there. That should do it. Very nice. Two more pneumatic doors. And then this one here we will lock off as soon as everything is built. We can already set these here up. You go straight over to the right. You go up. You go right. And you go down. That should get the job done here. And then right here in automation, what do you have to offer? Um, enable the building right here. Sends a green signal when it's red. Bolt storage is full. I think that is probably what we're going to do here. In automation, we're going to grab us an automation wire. With the automation wire, we're going to come all the way along to roughly right there. And then a knot gate. Right here. And then once again, automation wire. And we're going to bring it to all three of them. All three of them are going to be turned off the moment that this thing here is just full. It will cost us a few rappels that are in here. But in the long run, when we are not researching anything, which you can see here happens quite a lot, um, should be okay. But yes, the problem is now that um, I just realized we have the doors here, but right there is now open. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. How are we going to do this? Always something here. I guess I could tear out these two tiles right here and make it a door. But then the question is, can I still feed it, though? I mean, they can't jump down, so this here should actually be the perfect solution. Yeah, that's that's going to be it. Eventually, we will figure out where this damn ladder goes here on the left. Uh, this one here will be locked. This one here will be open. And frozen hair did exactly what I don't want him to do. So we're going to put an airflow tile here on the top as well. And that should do it. This one here can then just stay open. It doesn't make a difference. It's a door. It counts. But the dudes can still come down here. Ah, damn it. No matter what I do, it's always something. What is the best way? How is the crude oil heating program coming along? That's actually a good question. How are we looking down here? Um, down to 120 degrees, 400 degrees. Uh, back here. It will take some time for all this heat to transfer over. Uh, back here, that used to be at 1000 degrees. We're now at 700. I think we're doing just fine. I think this works... Um, perfectly fine honestly and it's not like we need it for anything so it's not like we are under time pressure or anything that can't just sit here for all of eternity for all i care um not all of eternity but at least for a long time you can use a second door in the middle of the room and keep it just open uh mesh door from the bottom uncheck arrows in the door yeah yeah these arrows here will be unchecked what if i go if I uncheck these arrows, will they still be able to feed it? I'm not entirely sure. I guess we will check it. I guess we will see. It's definitely going to work, at least for right now. Let's see. Let's grab all this stuff out of here. Everything that's still laying around. There is nothing laying around other than this little bit of sandstone right here. And once we have that, we should be okay. And we can hook our power back up. And shouldn't have a problem at all. They should, uh, if they can't, build the ladder one space higher. Yeah. Alright, all the stuff is out. Uh, this door right here. Nobody enters. Same with this door right here. Should be okay. And then, let's hook our power back up. And let's see if that does us any good right here. You can add a dupe sensor to the light. Yeah, I should actually add dupe sensors to all the lights around here, to be quite honest. Um, yeah. 
Let's take a look into automation. Let's see, duplicate motion sensor. We should be able to put it right there because they should never go any further anyway. And then let's grab us our automation wire and hook it up. And while we are at it, I did notice that our metal refinery does nothing and nothing is never good. Um, what are we going to make us? Uh, we have plenty of copper. Um, let's take a look into our refined metals, what we actually have. Refined metals, we have 126 kilograms of copper. That's not a lot. We have 12 tons of lead, 1.9 tons of iron and 5 tons of aluminum. Let's get us more iron. Uh, let's say 30 of them. That should be plenty. Um, yeah, 30 tons. We have 41 tons. That should get us as far as we need to go. Uh, some lead tiles along the bottom to reduce the rat dosage of dupe walking under the red lab. How much radiation is down here? Oh, that is nothing. Yeah, I'm not concerned about that, honestly. That's just a waste of good lead, honestly. It's it's so negligible. It's never going to do anything. Even if the guy stands here all cycle, it's doing nothing. We're going to have some bleed through above and below the room, but it should be under 100. Above as well? No, above actually we are 100% fine. Just below. Because the room is not 5 high. It's only 4 high. Uh, so this one is actually not in the middle. It's actually off center towards the bottom. <coughs> Collecting rat bolts. 70 a cycle and 64 a cycle. Um, maybe we should also start some research uh, while we're at it. Let's see. What could we use next? The filter gas pump would be nice for that mini plastic though. It's probably also something we should be working on, but the steam turbine right here. Yeah, it would be stupid not to go over the steam uh, turbine right away. So we have it available when we need it. So we're gonna do precisely that. Very, very nice. Let's see, I just want to watch this first red bolt here firing. Oh, it's a nice sight when you are the first time into red bolts and it actually shoots out of this thing here like there's no tomorrow shouldn't be long here we are at a 43 out of 50 no plastic no dracos yet time to refine petroleum yes that is most definitely on our list uh how are we doing up here oh yeah look at this all we are pumping out is right now a carbon dioxide so it is time uh, is there any reason to ever enter this room here again? Probably not. Probably not. So let's just seal it up and call it a day. Uh, then we are going to create a vacuum in here. And this thing here will erupt in 7.5 cycles again. And we will be golden. Come on, dupes. Going to lose some bolts from the distance in the air. Yes, you are correct about that. And we just saw it flying. That was a, uh, a quick one. But we got it. Uh, let's suppress the current so we don't see this uh, error here the entire time. Then let's take another look into our room overlay and make sure it is a lab. Radiant pipes, you can warm up water. Yeah, you're right. We could do that probably. There's just no water around here. I mean, to build it through there siphon it all the way up there a lot of resources right now i think we're gonna leave that for now we can always come back having the radiation emitting dupe be your cook is a great use for them they sterilize the food as they cook <laughs> i mean they're already drinking radioactive uh sorry lead contained water so might as well have some irradiated food thrown on top of it. I mean, what does it matter at this point, right? <laughs> uh, beer just build one tile above the red lamp, then they can't go in. And they can't go in? Uh, but it uh, diagonally can feed them. One tile above here. They can still go in. Oh yeah, you're right. You are 100% right. That is actually the perfect solution. Ha! Leslie91. 
Thank you very much. That is a great idea. That should solve all of our problems immediately. And this depleted uranium here, we are just outright going to ignore. Then we can also um, leave this here open again, because it doesn't matter anymore. That is the perfect solution. Simple, efficient, I like it. I like it a lot. You're welcome, master. Apparently you're the master, not me. <laughs> no, truly though, that was a great idea. Love it. Love it. That's the, that's the fun about live streaming, you know? You talk to uh, um, all these different people, all those different minds, and how do I always uh, tell my apprentices at work? Four eyes always see more than two. And here, we are a hell of a lot more than four eyes. So, these solutions are just getting better every second. Awesome. All right, we're going to come up here. We are going to improve this pipe here right now as well. Pipe. I keep saying pipe. This is clearly not a bloody pipe. Uh, obviously, uh, this is a power wire. But still, we have enough lead sitting around that it is time that we replace all of those old wiring here with something new before we burn down the house, or in this case, the base. Okay, looking good. Now we won't need this gas filter here anymore. It's now completely for nothing. So let's tear it out. This here goes. In F7, gonna need none of this here. Or this. Or that. But we're gonna connect this here up straight. And we already have a 59.3 kilograms per tile in a total space of eight tiles. Wonderful. So we already have a nice buffer storage right here. And we haven't even done anything yet. The thing hasn't even erupted yet, as a matter of fact. So we're doing perfectly fine. And always important is, of course, use crude oil or something like crude oil. For example, petroleum works just as fine if you want to build an infinite storage with natural gas. Because otherwise, your water will boil off in an absolute heartbeat. Let's get rid of these things right here while we are at it. All right. Looking better every second. Now, as we said, we haven't really refined a damn thing yet in any way, shape or form. Uh, it looks like all of our oil has molten. And just to give you a little bit of a perspective here, just this area here is roughly 165 tons worth of crude oil. And that is only this area right here. Uh, we have a hell of a lot more than that. So we should have probably, I mean, just guesstimating 400 tons of oil just sitting here. Plus minus a little bit. So I think we are doing just fine. And right here we are slowly but steadily getting colder and colder and colder. That's amazing. And that works better than I expected with those temp shift plates right here. Not gonna lie. Perfectly fine. Alright, it is time to refine some petroleum here. But where are we gonna put the uh, petroleum? In a perfect world, I would like to take all this crude oil here, convert it and put it over here. Um... But we will get down here to the magma, so we are not going to do a hell of a lot with it. We are just going to let all the stuff here slowly but steadily drop down here until we are in this area right here. And once we reach this area right here, we have more solid crude oil that we can melt. And then we're going to let the magma do the job for us. Of course, with a 100% conversion rate. Um, unfortunately, we can't wait that long. We need some petroleum before that. So, uh, what is a very simple thing that we can do here? In refinement, we need a oil refinery. Uh, the oil refinery. Where are we going to put it? What is a good space for it? How about we dig this stuff here up and then make us a nice flat area where we can build some stuff over here, huh? That's probably the best idea. There we go. Right here, we're just going to use this area. Can you make a pea trap? To get under the oil. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. And why I would want to go under the oil. Sorry, Killjoy. I just can't follow right now what you mean. A pea trap to get under the oil. Like under your thing. Okay, I see what you're saying. You basically want to dig something like this here. But... What am I going to do down here yet? Right at the moment, I'm just trying to cool this here down so we can take this petrified fossil out. Uh, and then slowly but steadily, we're going to dig all of this here out. 
like this entire thing here is going to be one big oil basin. Just look at how much we have and how much more we're going to get. All of this here is all frozen oil. In each and every one of those one tiles right here is going to be three tiles. It's a lot of oil. A lot of it. That we need to take care of. So for right now. The best course of action is extending this here straight over. This here is going to be our straight line. This is where our, our room is going to be. But this mass can't. Because the oil is overpressuring and crushing two or less tile tight walls. It depends on what you build them out, right? Liquid carbon dioxide, that is not oil. You are not oil. You are also not oil. You are more spore kits. Come on, dupes. Somebody come down here and dig. Then down here we have more polluted ice. We should probably go ahead. All this here is at about negative 10 degrees. I'm not entirely sure how you are still frozen. Do you not put your petroleum refineries in a liquid locked room for ease of natural gas collection? Yes, that is the plan. Right here. Not entirely sure yet where I'm going to put the liquid lock, but yes, that is definitely the plan. Um, right here. I just want to dig through here to get this uh, somewhat warmer water over here to melt this uh, um, polluted ice right now. Let's dig through here, just like that. And up here we have even warmer water. Uh, probably should try to get this here included as well. It's still freezing cold down here. Usually I wouldn't build it that far down. Usually I would, fill, uh, I would build the refineries way further up, somewhere closer to the base. But for right now, we don't have to worry about nothing. Uh, at least not heat-wise. We can just build it literally out in the open. Um, like for example right here, I built insulated tiles. Um, but where I'm going to put the room, I'm just going to put in normal tiles. And the cold around it is going to be our friend and not our enemy in this case right here. So that's going to be uh, very simple. And then the plastic. Where are we going to build the plastic, though? Um, do we have the plastic unlocked? Yes, we have the polymer press. Polymer press takes up three spaces and it releases steam. Thankfully, we have a big open area right here. So we can just plop all of the stuff in here, really. You know, instead of building it down here in this little space, we could build it a little bit further up into a bigger space. Like, for example, all along here and build our refineries and our presses in the same area. Because it really doesn't hurt anything. Our steam is going to condense anyway. I think that's actually the better course of action. Let's do that. Um, Yeah, let's see here. With normal tiles. Let me think about this for a second. Right over here, we're just going to build normal tiles along the floor and along the roof. All the way around, actually. And then, in refinement, we will need a, not a metal refinery, but an oil refinery. The oil refinery uh, needs to be manually operated, so it needs to be up front. And the polymer presses can be in the back. For that, we need metal tiles on the floor. That should be more than enough to actually get uh, rid of the stuff. And with the stuff, I mean water. Build your walls first before digging it out so you don't need to pump out so much gas to make a vacuum. I guess that's one way to look at it. I mean, the gas is still going to flow in. Uh, to your point about the cold, instead of insulating on the bottom, you might as well make them out of metal. Yes, that is what I'm trying to do here. I'm just thinking about it right now. Um, in refinement, oil refinery, the steam will turn to ice right away. Probably. It will probably be ice up until we heat this area here up a little bit. <laughs> um, right around here, maybe. Two plastic. I can't remember the actual values. The polymer press needs how much? 
it needs uh, 833 grams per second and the oil refinery produces five kilograms per second so at least on a piece of paper one oil refinery can feed five polymer presses without a problem but it is dupe operated we got to keep that in mind um so maybe we should make three three polymer presses and a one oil refinery that seems like a reasonable amount here We will have to build us um, a tank somewhere. Where that is doesn't matter. Probably above here. Um, we will need a liquid lock over here. And by the time, I mean to heat this here up. Are we ever going to heat this here up? That's the bigger question. Probably not. Do I really need to be concerned with that right now? That's the bigger question. You know what? Let's do it anyway, though. The oil refinery, we're going to cancel the build. We're going to build it one over. We're going to build a one tile right there. Something just like this here. The bottom right here, we're going to rip out. And we're going to make it metal tiles. Made out of whatever we have the most of. Lead will do the job. Something like this here. And then one of them, we are going to make a mesh tile. And then we're going to build a tiny little basin down here on the bottom with a pump in it. Again, not anticipating to actually needing it, but that is roughly what that should look like. Now we, che now we just need a liquid lock over here, and we should be golden. And while we're at it, we have one more blueprint to unlock. So I would say, let's take a peek at that. Please, don't give me gloves. It's a flower pot, a funky yellow flower pot. Uh, all right. I guess that's funny. Can't have enough flower pots, I guess. All right, let's make this here empty. That was our last one for the stream. Let don't melt too easily. 300 degrees. Uh, long before our lid here melts, I think our, um, well, no, that's not true. The melting point is 1000 degrees. I don't think that we get anywhere near 300 degrees here anytime soon. I don't think so. If you don't play a storage bin for plastics, then better to place a weight plate under the press to stop production after two tons. My plan was to have a uh, auto sweeper right here and just bring it all the way up the base. Just to have it out of the way. Machinery will overheat before the, le uh, the lead melts. Yeah. And I just don't see how we could have that problem here. But again, only one way to find out, as usual. We will need these here, though. Um, let's get rid of them. Uh, let's grab us. Where are we at? Manual airlock, not a manual airlock. A tile is what I'm looking for. Probably an insulate. No, we have oil. Just as simple as that. That's our liquid lock right there. And that should do it. Very, very easy. I just gotta do it. That's usually the bigger problem. How many tons of plastic you will need? Probably not too many, at least not in the beginning, because I don't want to waste too much uh, oil right here. Uh, but I definitely want to have a good stockpile. Maybe, I don't know, like five tons or something. I'm going to try to monitor it manually with our resources right here. It's going to be simple. A pump to pump the natural gas out of the refinery. Yes, um... Actually, do we even have a space for one? God damn. I was thinking I'm going to build it once all the walls are built, but maybe that is not going to happen. Because we don't have enough space for it. Ah, uh, yeah. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? This is why I'm so obsessive about Dracos. More plastic than I ever need. Yeah, I would love to have a Draco, unfortunately. It's not in the cards today. <laughs> we don't have a space for a pump. That is a problem. But in research, 
We have now this here. We could go for the mini gas pump, I guess. Um, it's not that much. How much is an oil refinery actually producing? 90 grams per second. And how much can this little pump here pump? Now uh, we can see it can be. Um, yeah, not entirely sure. We need to research it first to see. We will see. We will go from there once we have it. Just move the wall at the left two tiles. Yeah, I could do that, of course. But if it can keep up at 90 grams per second, then I will be happy with the small pump. Oh, I came home a little too late. What did I miss? I mean, there's, we, did, we did quite a lot. We did quite a lot. We have our steel production up and running. We have our research over here up and running. We have our materials uh, study terminal. We have a bunch of radiation that is currently turned off by automation, of course. Yeah. You're unlikely to be otherwise making use of the space. Or the ceiling. <laughs> I see, I know, I can't move literally any wall, guys. <laughs> uh. Oh, God. Is everything even reachable? Yes, it is. What we also will need is power, and we're just going to do that locally. Uh, no problem at all. In power, we're just going to grab us a large power transformer and literally just plop it up top here. Because it doesn't make a difference in any way, shape, or form. We're just going to come down here and hook it all up. I uh, just got to remind myself, how much do they need? Polymer press needs 240 watts. Oil refinery needs 480 watts. Yeah, that's nothing. Easy. Just use four mini pumps. How much does one mini pump pump? One mini pump pumps 50 grams per second. Yeah, we could do that. I think I like that idea, though. Uh, the space to the upper right above the liquid lock. I could literally just you move these up here. There's literally nothing stopping me from going. Let's see. Could do something like this here. And then just rip these two here out. That is certainly a solution that does work. And it's uh, very quick. Gives us more space than we ever need. I think that's how we're going to do this, yeah. 50 grams per second. It would be good enough for two of them. But on the bright side, um, once we have the first plastic here, we can just go ahead and plop in a filtered pump. Uh, so we don't actually have to create a vacuum in here. Does the gas go through the, through the mesh? If so, can you put the gas pump next to the water pump? Would be another viable solution. We will need actually more space down here anyway, because the liquid pump will just be running at all times. We don't want that. Uh, just thinking of it. We need one more tile right here. Uh, we need to bring this one oh, one further over, because we will need a little bit of automation right down here. Um, that would be a hydro sensor. And the hydro sensor can literally live right beside it. That is totally fine. And then hook it up like this. One mini pump pumps one fourth of the volume of a full pump and uses half the energy. It's great for making vacuums in a hurry. Four mini pumps seem like they're taking much longer than one full size pump, but if they're spaced properly, that'll work really well. All right, let me read that again. One mini pump pumps one uh, quarter the volume of a full pump. One quarter. That would be what? 125. That would be 125 grams per second, though, because one pump pumps 500 grams per second, right? And uses half the energy. Okay. All right, guys. Build it. Oh, that is everything. I don't want to rip out everything. The power wire can't stay put. So, in deconstruction, we're going to say buildings, and we're going to rip these two here out. Alright, guys, you literally have to give me a minute here. I need to use the bathroom real quick, and I'm just going to let lead, uh, leave the game running right here at one time speed. I should be back in less than three minutes.
All right. Let's see. Did the dupes do anything? Well, not a hell of a lot, apparently. As usual. Come on, dupes. Get it done. Oh, what's going on in chat? I checked on Oni Wiki. It's 50 grams per second. A big pump pumps 500 grams per second. Yes, half a kilograms per second on a big one. I know that one for a fact. Most of the time when you're making a vacuum, your pumps are not working at full speed anyway. Hmm. I have no idea. Have you researched it yet? Nope, not quite yet, but soon. And we can take a look and we can verify for ourselves. Our pump here is coming along. Our polymer press here is not, though. Let's turn up the speed again. Now that I have a control again over the game, it uh, should be rather easy. Let's take a look at our F1 over there. Oh, yeah, we're looking golden. Look at all this. Perfectly fine. No problem at all. Of course, our Atlas suits are in heavy use right now, which means all the oxygen is going to go straight into here and nothing goes into our base, but that is totally fine. Uh, we just need to get back your dupes, really. Come on. Get it done. And we still need to get oil in here. Kind of forgot about that as well. <laughs> Might as well do that right away. In plumbing, we will need a bottle emptier. And the bottle emptier goes right here. Of course, for that, we first need to deconstruct this tile here again. So we can then plop some crude oil into here. And that should then get the job done. This ladder here. Random ladder in the middle of nowhere, always good. We can also slowly start thinking about our pipes. Our pipes right here. Theoretically, we should just be able to come straight across here. Because if this here is full, it will just keep on pumping then. And then we'll pump it all the way into here. That's fine. And then we were talking about a buffer. A liquid reservoir. We can't just put it literally right above here. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's build two of them. Can't hurt. And then once again with the pipes gonna come up here, into there, and then back down all along the floor and into there. That's what that should look like. And of course our polymer presses right here do need a gas output. The gas output is not for the steam but for the carbon dioxide. So we need to find in ventilation a, a little bit of a uh, insulated pipe right here. I'm gonna just bring it across right here, something like this. What is our pressure down here? 1400. That's quite a lot. Um, in ventilation, the high-pressure gas pump does need 50 kilograms of plastic, which we currently don't have, so that is an issue. Um, probably just gonna put a normal one on here for right now. It shouldn't matter too much. Alright, get rid of this tile here, guys. It is time. And then plumbing, all emptier, and plop it right there. We probably need to get rid of this tile here as well, don't we? Well, uh, of course. Because if we now try to put it in here, I'm pretty sure it will go onto this tile and just go everywhere. <laughs> Trying to avoid that. So four minis ends up pumping four times as fast as a full-size pump very early in the process. I mean, of course, there can be a argument made. If I have one pump right here, it takes the gas in this corner a long time to get over here. If I have four pumps throughout the entire length of it, the vacuum will be generated a hell of a lot faster. Not necessarily because we are pumping more, but most likely because the distribution of volume is different. That's at least how I would look at it. Alright, what are we building first? Nothing. Who is starving and why? 255,000 calories. Jay right here is uh, just standing around instead of getting himself some food. Uh, let me take a look into the schedule right here. We still have only two schedules and they are way off center actually. But they do have two tiles of downtime. That should be enough. Now let's move two more dupes over to the other schedule. Uh, we don't really have any dupes that are good during a certain time, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, now it is a little bit more 
straight. <laughs> Chai says, yep, that's me. <laughs> oh, Jay. Uh, that is just funny. Need to be cooking, but instead I'm watching some streamer play Oxygen Not Included. Yeah. I have a feeling we have all been there, including myself. So there's that. But hey, at the bare minimum, I appreciate it that you're hanging around. I will probably stream, uh, be streaming for about another hour, uh, in case you want to know. Uh, roughly about 8.30 or so is the plan right now. 8.30 Eastern Time, Eastern United States Time, that is, of course. That is the general idea. So we can still definitely get a hell of a lot done here. I'm planning on finishing this year, and then if the time allows, we will also change this area here a little bit and uh, start utilizing our natural gas. How are you looking up here? 1.6 cycles. So slowly but steadily, you should be coming online and supplying us with more natural gas. And at the moment, we're just stockpiling it for when we need it. You're not just watching some streamer. This is the one and only beer tier. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> get some tubes once you have plastic. Yeah, that may be an option, especially to get all the way down here. Um, probably a good idea. Just not entirely sure how we do this. Because usually I build them all across the entire base, but we need to have atmosphere suits on if we want to get down here. So, uh, we will come up with a solution. No problem. Okay, the oil is coming. Maybe it will be faster to just put a liquid vent right there, huh? Where is my liquid vent? Uh, plumbing, liquid vent. And this thing here overpressures at a thousand kilograms. That would actually be perfect. We can just literally plop it right there. Why is this ladder still here? Come on, get rid of it already. But at least slowly but steadily, you can kind of tell what the idea is. How about you don't do this yet? You dupes. Chill out for a little bit here. I don't care about the polymer press, but look at this. We actually do get water right here. So the uh, cold on the outside is actually still generating water. So good thing we put our pump in because we will need it very, very shortly. If we can get this uh, liquid vent put in here now, we will have a liquid lock in uh, no time. Vent 9 priority? Of course. Of course. There we have our vent. Get in there. I just gotta fill up this bottom towel right here. Um, needs plumbing. Yes, you are right. That is why I left this wall here open. Just didn't do anything with it yet. It does have power. It does have a hydro sensor. It needs to be set to above, not below. And I also don't know exactly why they don't want to build this mesh tile here. Not for the life of them. There shouldn't be a real reason. A real reason for it, you would think. But, well, here we are. And that is already enough. Tear it out. Number nine priority. Don't need any more of that, dupes. Please get it done. We're just wasting oil here because we don't have enough. There we go. That'll do it. The plumbing is now in as well, so we can build our wall here very soon.
true. You're right, Gunnar. I could have used the damn uh, pliers. <laughs> uh, you, of course, can't reach that now because there is no ladder. Let's put another one in. Making burgers and hitting that like button. Don't forget to do the same, says Magenta. One of my wonderful moderators. And he's, of course, right. Guys, if you haven't liked yet, do me a favor. Like the stream. It doesn't cost a dime. And it helps me out greatly. All right. Very good. Uh, it actually did freeze to ice now. Why is the water not freezing? Strange. Because it's coming out so hot that it is actually uh, heating up the metal tiles right here, I believe. That's my assumption. What does it come out at? Well, the steam is coming out at 200 degrees or hotter. Um, then it will condense to water. And when it condenses to water, it will come down at... Um, there's our space. That should work. Let me double check it real quick. It should come down at 100 degrees. Even though it's not much, it should still be more than enough to take care of the... Um, metal tiles. Yes, we have now space for a pump right here. Um, yeah, let's put one in. It's not gonna hurt. We're gonna replace it probably with a filter. Well, you know what? Screw it. We're just gonna create a vacuum in here. Then we don't need an, um, and we will not need a filter pump. Man, I forgot I'm watching a live and try to jump a few seconds sometimes. <laughs> The gas pump. I accidentally built it out of steel. What am I doing? There we go. Definitely don't want to waste 50 kilograms of steel on that. And then the last thing that I said I would do, so I should do it if I said I will. Right here, we have enough space for an auto sweeper. Oh, we're just going to grab the auto sweeper, plop it right there, hook it also up to power. And then we need, once again, in shipping a conveyor loader should fit somewhere i would hope yep this way around we're just going to plop it this way around and then a conveyor rail made out of whatever we have the most of let's see aluminum ore yeah i'm not gonna waste that though we're gonna stay with copper and then come all the way up we will need this exact same line here for a lot more later anyway so it's not gonna hurt anything it's gonna bring it through here and into there it's going to be a lot of copper that will be used, I know, but it will be worth it in the long run because we have a lot of stuff down here that we can't just get out with um, um, auto sweepers and we will probably then tear it out at some point in the future again and get our copper back. The auto sweeper is made out of lead, is it? Yeah, we don't want to do that probably. Um, let's see here, auto sweeper. I mean, it's made out of lead, 300, uh, 300 degrees, 75 degrees, and our natural gas is coming out at 75. Yeah, we can't do that. It cannot be made out of lead. Um, we can make it out of iron, though, so let's do that. That was a good catch there, Gabriel. It will overheat in no time. Yes, I said, definitely, great catch. You are 100% correct. There is no question about it at all. And then this pump right here we can already hook up to power. And then in ventilation, insulated pipe. We're just going to bring it out for right now. And then a gas vent. Just as simple as that. And here on the bottom, no, not like that. We can close the syrup. Shouldn't do as much harm. Um, the water may be freezing down here. We will see if the water is enough then to finally heat up those tiles or not. But we will see. Did you power the conveyor loader? No, I didn't. Good call. Once again. <laughs> uh, right here, 1680. Should be more than sufficient. Once again, still no problem at all. In F7, how are we looking right here? Those are now basically constantly running. We are starting to use more and more power, so we need to get the natural gas in. Why are you guys here not working anymore? Body temperature. What happened? Oh, that's what happened. Uh, of course, we are running a low on uh, polluted water. How much uh, reed fibers did we get? Let's see here. Reed fibers. We have 54. That will hold us over for a while. Eventually, we will go in and let's see. Where did I see that earlier? Like right over here, we have a bunch of polluted ice going on. Uh, all this here, we will transport up to here. 
we will melt it and fill this here back up. And then, of course, right down here on the bottom, we have all this polluted water right here. Um, so we will get even more out of this polluted ice. So we will um, have more than enough polluted water. But for right now, the 54 that we got are perfectly fine without an issue. Nothing to worry about there at all. At least I'm not worried about it. Do we pump polluted water from oil biome? We will. I heard that starving thing. It was probably Jay again, yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure I went to get some cereal for dinner. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We wanted to try this, didn't we? Does that work? The bottle emptier is actually set to enable auto bottle. And this one here says it has 20 kilograms of polluted water available. So theoretically, they should come by and pump it out of there. It was real me, not dupe me. <laughs> All right, those two tiles and we should be golden. need to move it more to the right yes yes we need to get it into this area right here 100 this here was just a proof of concept really but now we have these tiles here all the way around all good no issues so we can now then turn on this pipe right here actually i never turn it off i'm still waiting for the gas vent i guess so it's more of more of a lie than anything else <laughs> there we go we have it let's create us that vacuum and then bigger problem is going to be we need a gas pipe that goes all the way over here <clears throat> mm, sorry that goes all the way up here unless we do something about this situation here first that's probably the best case let's see our current ration box is right here have we ever unlocked the fridge yes we have uh, the fridge can hold a lot more food and it has a smaller footprint at least an easier to build one we could go ahead. What is a good location for our fridge? Something that is preferably away from um, polluted oxygen inside of carbon dioxide and not easily reachable. Or it should be easily reachable, I mean. Let's see, where can we go? It should still be, again, not too far away from the main base. We could just create us something, like for example, right here. There's really nothing stopping us from just sending the dupes to in here and having a few fridges. Yeah, let's do something like this here. Very simple, very straightforward, no problem whatsoever. So let's see if that will do the job. One of those fridges holds how much? I can't remember. 100 kilograms and one of these ration boxes holds actually 150. My goodness, they hold more? I was not aware of that, not gonna lie. Let's build us a couple more. Can't have enough of them and they don't cost anything. We are not going to power them. Not the dig. Cancel the fridge. There we go. Let's do something like this here. And then suppress the current and everything. Wonderful. There we go. Okay, now the ration box is here. We are going to empty those out and we're going to put it up here. And that is going to be a very simple process. In Edible, we're going to select everything. Uh, literally everything you have. Bring it in here with a number nine priority. All the way through to the rear. And the last one we're going to set to all the cooking ingredients. Also with a number nine priority. And then these here, we are going to reduce in priority to 5, which should then make the dupes come down here, grab it out, kind of like that, and put it into our fridges. Simple. And very efficient, just as we like it. I have a mod for bigger fridges with deep free states. It's a lot easier. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I would be surprised, actually, if it wouldn't be. <laughs> 
Let's rip out all of these here. Duration box looks horizontal, but it occupies four spaces. Yes, it sure enough does. That is 100% correct. Now, over here on the right side, all these here. I don't even know why I built those anymore. I can't remember. How did we get crude oil in here? Oh, that is why. Those are set to liquefiable, and apparently we must have dug up some crude oil somewhere on accident, and we put it in here. Good God. <laughs> it's almost funny, honestly. Oh, goodness. All right, we're going to get rid of you two as well. We're just going to ignore that oil for now. I said hobby the area. Hobby the area as well. <laughs> um, you need only to it into CO2. Yes, it is in CO2, and it should be cold enough um, that we are... Nice and cold with all of our food here, so that should be perfectly fine. But that is, once again, not what I wanted to do. Let's see. We said that this one here produces um, an average of 101 grams per second. And we have down here oil refinery, which will not run that long, which produces 90 grams per second. And this one right here, we don't know yet. But just by looking at it, we can see it produces 400 grams per second, and it is erupting 210 for every 490. 210 for every 490. So they are probably not too far apart. The other one is more potent than this one right here. And again, they're not going to be running 100% of the time. So let's build us some tiles. Um, let's go all the way over here. I need to measure it out. I forgot the uh, size of our natural gas generator. There we have it. Uh, this one and this one, we can build two here and then two more down here. There are three high. How are you three high? There we go. That's where you belong. And then put a few more tiles right here. We don't need it out that far, actually. There we go. So all this here I want to have built, please. That should work. And then what we are getting out of here is polluted water. This polluted water is going to be very helpful it's coming out at 40 degrees or hotter it's not going to be hotter it's going to be 40 degrees most likely um we need something to catch that polluted water that's coming out of here so let's take another look here down here in the bottom we are just going to build us a little basin that looks kind of like this here just as simple as that. Obviously, you need to leave it open so the dupes can come in and out during the building phase. And how did she, this stone hatchling end up right here? Come on. Get wrangled and then drowned, preferably. That should get the job done. Gabriel says, this week on the municipal accounting was chaos and I'm completely destroyed. Good night, friends. Gabriel, have a good night. Thank you for joining. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I truly hope you have a good and relaxing night. All right. Let's get this here dug out in absolute haste. Of course, can't forget our fancy mesh tiles, which go here, 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 and there. Very good. Slowly but steadily, we are making wonderful progress here. And then with our wire right here, we're going to come straight through something like this. Up here to the top and into there. That is also going to be very helpful. And then we need a gas pipe that comes down, which is, of course, unfortunately powered by those two gas pumps right here. But if we want to have a buffer, and that is most definitely what I want, uh, we don't really have a choice. So how are we going to do it? Let's see. We do have a two byte corridor right here. You know what? Let's make this two byte corridor here an official Part of the base, and not just a thing that just happens to be there. And then we're gonna come down this ladder. And into there. Just as simple as that. And then straight down. That is going to be our input pipe. Something like this. And something like that. The nice thing is, because the natural gas generator also creates carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide has to go somewhere, and we already have a solution for this problem. Ready to roll. It's just a matter of uh, building a pipe all the way through to here, maybe? And then over to right there. Plop this in, plop that in, 
they connect it to the pipe. Easy. That should be basically everything that we need. Uh, just one thing here. As soon as the first piece of pipe here is built, I want to snip it off so we can control when it turns on and not the game by itself. I don't understand why you can't just pipe the polluted water out of the generators directly. Honestly, a weird design choice. I, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you're 100% right. I don't know either. Why wouldn't you be able to do that? It would make perfect sense to do it, but here we are. We have to deal with it, so we will. Once we have all this stuff here done, we will go ahead and put a pump in here once again with a hydro sensor. We missed one gas output. Did I? This one, this one, this one. Oh, yes, I did. Ah, good catch. Very good catch. Thanks, Cassiopeia. Appreciate it. And Serial Killer BR also caught it. Very nice. You guys are a hell of a lot more observant than me, that's for damn sure. There are there's a mod to it, a port to it. I'm sure there is. And several mesh tiles. No. The mesh tile, you only need uh, one right here that goes through. So this output right here will go through this mesh tile. This output right here will go through this mesh tile and it will all end up down here in the bottom. And the same goes for the right side. That's that's no problem. I didn't build them in the beginning. I just put in a floor and then I built over it. We are going to get rid of this uh, stuff right here. Uh, not a gas pipe is built, so let's snip it off right away. Because the moment this piece here is built, these here will start pumping and coming down with it. Don't want to do that. Second tile from the left. You mean second tile from the right. If you're talking about the mesh tile where it goes on a natural gas generator. Gas generator is four tiles wide. Second from the right. Okay. Now, these here, of course, need to be connected. Can't forget about that. That's somewhat important. And then uh, let's clean this stuff here up. All of it while we're at it, as a matter of fact. And then down here on the bottom, we need in plumbing, once again, our nifty liquid pump. This time built out of literally anything at all. It does not matter. And then we need in automation. Our hydro sensor. Just going to plop it right here because it doesn't matter. And hook it up. In F2, we will need power. And for that, we are just going to utilize in power our heavy watch joint plate. We're going to plop it right here. Obviously, not right now, so the dupes can go in and out. And hook it straight up to our big power wire. That's totally fine. I mistake left with right. <laughs> I'm learning every day here. Didn't know about the outlet to be so easy. Well, that's awesome. I love to hear that. Are you aware that you can snip plants? It's not necessary to wait for the gas pipes or anything else to be built before you can snip. Really? And if they build it right now, can I put it back together once it's built um, without having a dupe to come by? Does that work too? I wasted tons of mesh tiles for the shit. <laughs> I mean, better safe than sorry, right? I mean, I, I do see your point here, Dave. So, 100% see your point on this one. Wow. See, it's not only that you guys are learning something, but me too. Isn't that nice? That is how everything should be in life, a give and a take. Come on. Finish it up, will you? Are coal generators actually viable considering how fast they burn coal and how little coal some asteroids can have? Is there a way to produce more coal? We are actually producing more coal um, up here right now. At the moment, though, the problem is we can see we are down to 5.5 tons. We were up um, to 24, I believe, is the highest I've seen. So, yes, they are somewhat viable if you want. Um, as long as you have enough hatches to feed and as long as you have enough resources to feed them. 
Um, they should be replaced, though, and that's kind of what we are up to right now by better sources of power. But yes, hatches do create coal. Um, again, not sustainable forever, though. The mesh tiles goes in the rightmost tile under a petroleum generator. Yes, so the petroleum generator does the same thing. That is also correct. Let's build this heavy water trim plant. And we are good. Hydro sensor above 500 kilograms. And I'm an idiot. I don't have a pipe here. Hey, then, nay. Of course, always something. How else would it be? Um, what's the easiest way to do it? We can't just get rid... Uh, you know what? I'm going to... Just to cancel this here real quick and deconstruct it. It's not a big deal. Before I try to get fancy here with something. In plumbing. Insulated pipe. It's gonna come straight out to here. And then we deal with the rest later. Simple. How are we doing down here? How are we looking? Do we have a vacuum yet? Of course not. Takes forever, as we all know. Especially since the area here is uh, considerably bigger than you would think. And there's one more thing. Our conveyor loader right here. Um, we cannot set it to liquefiables. That has to be turned off. There we go. Can't forget about that or it will try to put ice onto our conveyor rail if it freezes on our metal tiles right here. And if it put, uh, puts ice onto the conveyor rail, it will try to put it in here. Which by itself is a good thing because we currently have no water in it as a matter of fact. And a few drops wouldn't hurt. Probably should do that. But in general, uh, we don't want it to overflow. Our critter killer is still happily killing critters. Uh, that's good. Bringing another one. How many do we have in here right now? Uh, let's see. We currently have... Where is my... Critter sensor 3. We need one more. If we find one more, um, we are golden. And we can drown those suckers and get even more food. Of course. Right at the moment, our dudes have no access to the food. Look at this. You damn dupes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Mordrek says, oh, a critter washing machine cough. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, we, we just want the best for the critters around here. Uh, uh, don't worry about it. Don't call PETA or anything. We, we, we're doing just fine. We're just fine. Anything else that we need to research right now that we should have? I don't need any of those yet. Uh, next thing, or eventually, very soon at least, will of course be going to space. Our battery module right here. Probably a good thing to have around. Certainly can't hurt. Let's grab it. Um, Brackeen, don't need it. Our creature comforts right here. We can do those probably. Come down here. Let's make sure this here's done. Are we good yet? Yes, looks like we are good now. Very nice. Stone hatches can make sustainable coal from igneous rock if you have a volcano, a regular melter, or another renewable source of igneous. Yes, that is very true. We do have a volcano. Uh, more than one, actually. We have several, I believe. This one here is one. Currently dormant, so that's really nice. So we will probably go down that route eventually. Um, at first, we need to get the basics up and running, though. Uh, how come he's not using a power plant? Lack of metal resources, maybe? Yes, we are currently lacking. Right down here, we do have a metal volcano. Um, and it's an iron volcano, to be very precise. We are going to be utilizing this thing here very, very soon. Update about my battery rocket. I have now 2.6 megajoules and 90% power are from solar. We also need to make sure that we get some glass in. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> so now let's finish this here up to get it finally done. Hey, what joint plate? And we are ready to rock. That's all it takes. Alrighty. 
Looking good. This is built. There shouldn't be much of a reason to not get started on it. Uh, I can only think of oh, one reason to be very precise, and that reason is that we have no automation yet. <laughs> so let's get that in as well. I'm going to put us another row right here, which is going to be occupied only by one single smart battery. All we need. Then we're going to go into automation, grab us an automation wire, and plop him into all four. And that should then really, this time, uh, be the end of it. Very, very nice. You would have enough metal, um... Wait, where did I see this? No, I lost it. Ah, there we go. You have enough metal for one power station and it would improve all your power generation by 50%. I could use the lead for a power plant. You're very, very, very right about that. I was attempting your base by this point in the game. Cold? <laughs> Let's just say cold. Probably cold. Um, too low. There we go. Also need some power here. Other than that, we are looking good. Alright, let's get this here, build tubes. Give me just one second, gonna grab me a drink. Thankfully, the drinks are right behind me. Look at the amount of views, stays at 69, nice. Jason's probably want to connect power to that smart battery. Got it, got it. Looks like a rhyme. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're correct. Dupes need a ladder to build the pipes up above. Which pipes up above? Oh, these here. <laughs> of course, this ladder here should go all the way down. That was the general idea in the first place. Thanks for pointing it out. I missed that as well. Probably would have connected this pipe here. And then figured it out the moment I connected it, and no uh, natural gas would have ever showed up. So there's that. Also, this smart battery here, we're just going to copy the settings from this one. This left one here is for our hydrogen generators. The right one is for our coal generators. The left one here turns on earlier than the right one does. So we are prioritizing hydrogen and also natural gas over coal. That's the idea. All right, let's see. Let's get him pumping here. How much do we have in here by now? 102 kilograms per tile. So that should be at eight tiles, about 800 kilograms. And each one of them uses 90 grams per second, I believe. Yes, 90 grams per second. So that should hold us over for quite some time. At least until this thing here goes dormant. And I just I was just saying that. I was like, there's no way it's dormant right now, but it is. Okay. It in this case, change of plans, we're going to grab this one here right away. Um, we're going to do something very similar as we did before, though. We're going to come over here, we're going to dig out a 2 by corridor, and we're going to let it fill up with wonderful carbon dioxide. Just as simple as that. Three likes from 69? Yes, guys, if we could get three more likes to make this 69, I would most definitely appreciate that. Most definitely. All right. Coming into a natural gas geyser from the bottom is uh, apparently a better idea than coming in from the top. I tried liking three more times, but it didn't work. <laughs> oh, Jay. <laughs> the funniest part is I know you're not joking. I know you clicked that thing three times. <laughs> All right, let's turn these things here on finally so we get to see something. The fruits of our labor. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. And very nice. And that is an instant 3,200 uh, 3, watts. Coming from these four natural gas generators. Very, very simple and nice. And over here. I'm going to dig down a second row. Just so we have a little bit more space for our carbon dioxide to flow down. And there is literally nothing here but carbon dioxide. So that should go down there like hot butter. No problem at all. But how did you know? I mean, I don't know you personally, but I do know your do pretty well, so. <laughs> 8.3 milligrams. That is basically a vacuum. Come on. 
And we are currently at exactly 69 likes. Look at that. <laughs> that is also a new record for me on likes on a live stream, at least during the live stream. So thank you guys. I truly appreciate that. That is amazing. That is definitely great. Let's get rid of all those here. Oh yeah, speaking of it, the mini gas pump pumps 50 grams per second. There is our 100% definitive answer. My dupe is disturbingly similar to me. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. Oh, come on now. 2,400 micrograms. How do I like I want to ruin? Hey, I'm not complaining, you know. How do I like? Depending on what device you're on. If you're on a computer, there should be a like button uh, literally uh, right under the video. Um, if you're on a mobile device, it should also be. Um, if you're not in full screen mode, right under the video as well. <sighs> Come on, pump it out so we can turn it on. That would be the second machine in a row that we can finally turn on. Someone beat me to it. <laughs> it will take ages to vacuum it. I know. I know. It's just because the distance from here to there. That's really what uh, what the main issue is. The further the distance is from the pump to the furthest tile away, the longer it takes. 71st? Well, that makes you the first guy to ever be the 71st liker on one of my live streams. If that is not something, I don't know either. All right, let's see here. We have our polluted oxygen in here because we have all this stuff down here. Can't have that. Let's get rid of it. No atmosphere for the geyser blasphemy. Ah, absolutely unnecessary. It's currently dormant. We're going to directly tell it to analyze it, though, so I don't forget it later once we get there. Look around for terminals, dig some tunnels to uncover map. Terminals? Do you mean our teleporters? Yeah, we do need to find the teleporters. I'm still thinking that they are probably here somewhere. Um, what is this here? I can't recall. We looked at this before. It's a cool slush geyser. Oh yeah, I remember myself saying, yay, that's exactly what we need. Let's dig straight up all the way to the thing, just so we can get there. And let's see if we can maybe uncover something right here. If that doesn't work, we're going to come in here from the side and try the same thing. Um, we also have this shipping container right here that I keep forgetting about. Uh, you guys told me there's a dupe in there that is apparently pretty good at a hell of a lot of things. So, I guess let's just see what happens here. I have no idea. Let's just say knock knock and let's see what happens. Also down here we have a big patch of nothing. Teleport and terminal. Um, oh yeah, we have our supply teleporter output right here. That doesn't look like the input. I don't know where the input is either. We haven't found the teleporter for dupes. Uh, neither the input nor the output. Neither one of the two. And we haven't found a, a supply teleporter input yet either. And I don't know how. We have uncovered quite a lot of this map. And we still haven't found it. So it's uh, weird. Time to F around and find out? I agree. But first, let's uh, work on the important stuff, which is this natural gas guys right here. Let's accumulate a wonderful, wonderful carbon dioxide down here. I want to get rid of the polluted oxygen. Please, just get over there and up. That's all we want. We have some excellent fruit over here and a load of oxygen. Down here, we have a lot of carbon dioxide. You know what, we're just gonna dig further over to the right and release this carbon dioxide at 1.6 grams. We did the knock-knock. And it's of course Jay, who else? <laughs> How else could it possibly be? So we knocked, now what? He wants to deliver food to the mailbox, deliver three unique food items. Quality must be uh, greater than four, okay? Improve nearby the core. Establish average decor of 120 or higher for the area surrounding this building. 
Uh, that's not hard. Turn on festive lights. Only 60 watts of power. Okay. So the biggest problem is apparently to get uh, three unique foods with a uh, quality of four or higher. So that is something we need to look into. But first of all, let's take this here out real quick and get this carbon dioxide here out. That is uh, perfect. The amount of pressure that we have in here, that should work like a charm. And we are once again just going to utilize our blueprint tool because a uh, white changer running system. So this is a natural gas geyser timer. Simple, confirmed. And then come all the way down here. Use the blueprint. And plop it right there. Isn't that nice? Ah, gotta love blueprints. We need buildings. Rip this out. And get it done. Of course, we need to first get there. But <clears throat> Pablo. Um, oh, sorry. I completely, I feel ignored, he says. I completely missed yours. Uh, not gonna lie. Are you actually German? As a German myself, uh, admire your English. No hint of German accent as far as I can tell, even though I have a really bad German accent. Yes, I am actually German. And I do believe that our American colleagues here would disagree that I don't have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, turns out I am actually German. It's 100% uh, correct. Um, I have lived in the United States since 2012, though. Is it even worth using gas masks, or should you just wait till Atmos suits? I have Atmos suits. We have Atmos suits over here. Uh, I use it for this area down here mainly. And okay, now we finally are we good now in F four? We still have a little bit of carbon dioxide, but now is it disappearing? Uh, come on, come on. You have to have complex foods to coax the hermit out of the container, but he does come with ancient knowledge and some skills. The cold kills of all the slime lung. Yep. You need to do this before end of the stream. You can't let us live for it. <laughs> you can't live life us with it. Uh, live live us with it for two more weeks. Uh, yeah, probably that's probably not going to happen because I'm going to be out of here in about thirty minutes, guys. I did it once. I think just based on the printing pot offering gourmet foods just took it just took a while. But it's taking a lot of uh, longer on my current colony. I wonder if they changed that. Wouldn't surprise me if they didn't have hidden waitings. <laughs> I can prove at least I can prove at least 74 people like your German accent. Apparently so. Apparently so. To get the dupe in the little house thing, you basically have to make his area max morale, air temp. Uh, and give him really good food and a gift. Okay. Definitely has an accent, but his English is 100% fluent in my native speaker opinion. Appreciate that. I mean, honestly, it would also be pretty sad if it wouldn't be after I've been living here for 12 years now, right? I can't hear an accent, but you're very easy to understand. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do a vote for it. Do a vote for what? Um, Okay. And Pablo P has uh, become a, another supporter of the stream, which is a membership. Thank you very much, Pablo. I truly, truly appreciate the support. That is awesome. And it makes me truly happy. Thank you very much. Okay, now all this shit here is done. Let's double check everything. We have power. That is correct. In F6, we have oil coming in. We have petroleum going out and it's coming over here. Very good. In F7, we're coming out of there. So there's nothing stopping us from re-enabling this building right here. And we should be golden, theoretically. So, let's do that. Uh, the only thing that is, of course, missing right now, we don't have yet a uh, pipe that's long enough. But also, that doesn't matter in any way, shape, or form, really. Um, gonna come out of here. Gonna come, what are we using here? Granite? Sure, use granite for all I care. We need to come all the way up to here, just trying to find the best possible place right here. Gas bridge coming over. Um, that is a little slight issue right here. Probably going to do it here. That's easier. Screw it. Take the easy route. There we go. 
and then all the way over to right around not like this there we go that's more like it just like this here gonna come over and we're just gonna feed it into here we are just going to use this pipe right here basically as our buffer all by itself i think that should work we will see how that goes if not we can always build a gas tank now at 90 grams per second it now will take a long time how much did we say are now in the gas tanks was it a thousand kilograms Yes, it's a thousand kilograms now. Now that thing is actually somewhat viable with a size of five freaking tiles. So at 90 grams per second, we can play this game for quite a while. No problem at all. There we go. Privak is here. He is turning the oil refinery wheel. And currently this gas pump right here. Of course, one other thing that I forgot is the atmos sensor that should go anywhere really. Just out of the way. Look it up. We don't want to be pumping the entire time. Come on, pump. Don't do me dirty like that. There we go. Deconstruct that. Number nine priority. Maybe we should be good. Yes, they pushed up the volume on the gas tank not too long ago. Yes, it was about time because that thing was just not viable in any way, shape or form. The size that they had and the amount that it can hold was a literal joke. I'm, I mean, honestly, though, it was probably the worst building in the entire game. So the water is currently freezing the moment it hits this tile right here. I kind of figured that would happen. The only way that doesn't happen is if we would build it out of um, insulated tiles. But I want to see if we are actually heating up this tile here slowly but steadily. Let's see. Come on, let another drop go down here. 16 point, 15 point five. So we are actually heating up the tile. We're just going to wait a little bit. I mean, the amount that's coming out of there is actually absolutely negligible. So even if we have, I mean, 50, 60, 80, 100 kilograms of ice right here, it still doesn't matter too much. I'm just wondering, will it win against the tile or not? you still need to build this here please that would be very nice and we're just cooling it down outright no problem at all yeah that works just like a charm okay so the only problem that we have now right here is that uh, nothing comes down here anymore because it's waiting for the output from this pipe yeah If you use the bridge mechanics to prioritize the waste natural gas, the infinite storage will store all extra gas. Yeah. Trying to think of um, how we are going to do this with a bridge. Let's see. We are coming into right there, theoretically. I mean, the bottom ones are right now. I could come. Well, the problem is we have two freaking pipes right here. It's just a pain to get over there. Just an absolute pain. Ugh. What is the smartest way to do this? It's a nice setup you did there. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <sighs> yeah, so the top two are now constantly running. But look at this here. We can actually see just I'm coming back into this in a second. That our insulated gas pipe right here is now completely full, more or less, with um, hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen gas is going to accumulate, and when this here is full, right there, it will go into our infinite storage. So we are saving all this uh, here as well. Put bridges on your vertical pipes. Yeah. The question is... How, where would I put it to make it work for top and bottom? Probably right here. Not entirely sure. If I put it right there. Or one lower. I can't tell right now. Am I crazy? Put a bridge over the junction point where the plastic gas... Plastic? 
The natural gas enters and disconnect the top from the middle so it enters the output of the bridge. That's what I'm thinking, so I think this bridge here obviously just needs to be cut off anyway. Yeah. So at least now it works this way again, but now this one here has priority. It's not going to work in the long run anyways. Once he'll go for the energy sources, the gas pumps will uh, m will maybe also not run permanently. I think that's the best idea from Croc right there. Use the tank to buffer it and consolidate two lines. That's probably the easiest solution, honestly. Uh, since we want to do that anyway. We could, but that once again leaves the question of where do we put it. If I have a gas reservoir, if I were a gas reservoir, where would I put myself? <laughs> Probably up here. But how do I get with this pipe up there? I could just put it right there. There's literally not a hell of a lot stopping me from doing that, right? If I put it right there, I can just come with my gas pipe into here, come with this gas pipe down here, and with this gas pipe straight up. I think that's the best solution right here because that will also buffer what's in here right away. I think that is the best plan right now. Put gas from plastic in infinite storage? It's not worth it. It's not worth to come with another pipe all the way to here for 90 grams a second, especially since we're not going to use it forever. We're just going to put another buffer right here from the infinite storage. I think that is the easiest, fastest solution right now. Again, for the guys that have just joined recently, this setup here looks nice and all, but it's not that efficient. Uh, because when we take a look into the oil refinery, we're using 10 kilograms of crude oil and we get only 5 kilograms of petroleum out of there. So it is not necessarily optimal. But right here is our oil reservoir. Down here we have a lot more solid crude oil that we can melt. All around the place really. And down here we have magma. So we can just use our magma to melt the crude oil. Or not melt it. <laughs> to convert it to petroleum at a 100% rate. Um, and that is exactly the plan right here. That is precisely how, how we are going to do this. And how hot it is down here? Nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. How is this here looking by the way? Is this getting any better? It is going a lot slower than I expected it, but we are down to 263 degrees. 263 degrees? That's actually very good. Uh, at 263 degrees, we don't need no metal tile anymore. Uh, this here is not going to hurt us in any way, shape or form, as a matter of fact. That means we can just uh, dig into this igneous rock right here and uh, flood it with oil. Very nice. All right. Here comes our gas. Very soon, at least. And then all we are going to do is we are just going to change this here. Come on. There we go. To go here and to go there. We're going to snip it off right here. And we're going to snip it off right there. And then this gas pipe right here goes upwards. That should consolidate it all into this uh, reservoir right here. Once we are there, there we go. And now we just have another buffer tank in the middle. Just as simple as that. It's not like we're going to do anything else with this natural gas here up until the point where we build a gas range. And from that point, we can just move it off. I think that's going to be a pretty good solution. All right. Plastic right here. I don't want to do that. I want to go into see all into plastic so we can keep not plastic plastic please there we go so we can actually keep track of it we are tracking steel we have 220 grand uh, 220 kilograms of lime 2500 kilograms of steel that's very nice so down here where did we stop right here we have a 1000 grams of sour gas um this abyssalite right here we're gonna tear it out Completely, and we're gonna annihilate the sour gas. I don't want any of this shit in my base, please. Therefore, we're just gonna get rid of it. We're gonna diagonally build a tile over it and call it a day. 
There we go, something like that. We don't need a metal tile. A normal tile will do just fine. Build it, delete it, and then destroy it. So we can then come down here with our oil. Use some of plastic for main road letters? Yes, we definitely will do that. That will save us a lot of time because they're a hell of a lot faster than these normal ladders right here. What was that, Conan? <laughs> Come on. Build the tile. You know you really want to. There we go. And not as our gas is deleted, we can deconstruct it and dig out this tile here as well. Very, very easy. Very, very nice. And now it's a vacuum. And once again, we are only at 124 degrees. And that is not going to harm us in any way, shape or form. Of course. Did you just start starving literally all the way down here? Good grief. You dupes. Alright. That should uh, help cool down this igneous rock here even more, but we don't even need to. We are literally just going to tear it out. I don't need this one, don't need this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Actually, as a matter of fact, we don't need any of this shit. Let's get rid of it. Can I see your schedules? Yeah, they're questionable. We probably need to add one more to our downtime right here because the commutes are so long. And we only have two schedules right now. That is another issue. We really need a third. Get rid of this one. We don't need this temp shift plater anymore. We don't need this igneous rock here anymore or this metal tile here anymore. Let's get rid of all of it. Replace one sleep by downtime, so three downtime for two sleeps. Do you think that's better? And I'm happy to try it. They will sleep what they need to sleep anyways. Let's try it. Downtime. Right here one. Right there one. Temp shift plate. Let's get rid of it. And then uh, this igneous rock right here. We're going to tear out as well. We have our metal tiles right here. We still need those. Because if I tear out those here, well, actually, probably wouldn't need them. Do they reach the tiles to build in the plastic room? The plastic room reached the tiles to build what in the plastic room? You mean this room right here? I'm not entirely sure what you mean, to be quite honest. But we can turn this thing here on. Uh, what happened right here? Oh. Uh, ladder too short. Here comes our natural gas. Quite a lot of it, actually. Really good. Put there a temp shift plate. Yeah, that's my plan. Uh, let's do that real quick while we're at it. I want to put a temp shift plate right here because the temp shift plate is going to reach this hydrogen gas right here. Going to cool that down a little bit as well. Might as well. No problem at all. They reached the room through the... Uh, through the pole. Oh, this is what you mean. Yes, yes, yes. I gotcha. Yep, yep. No problem. The pole is going to help us. And up here on the top, it's the same thing. That's how I built basically my entire base. When you take a look around here, well... Of course, when I wanted to show you right here, it's not the case. <laughs> but up here on the top, everywhere, all along, it's one tile away. Because, in fact, it's actually faster for dupes to jump one tile than to run one tile. Is it a big difference? Well, obviously not. But it's still better than nothing, right? Every little bit matters. Yep, natural gas is still flowing as it should. Down here we have our temp shift plate. And now the hydrogen gas in here is going down. Also, cooling down this petrified fossil right here. That is pretty neat. What are we doing with this thing here? Excavated. I guess we can just flood this here with oil and, and send a dupe down here. Is that how that works? I'm assuming. 
We need more ladders though, because the dupes can actually not get down here, I believe. Yeah, there's no way for them to get here. <laughs> And right here. <laughs> we actually <laughs> emptied out our <laughs> our infinite storage and put it into the gas reservoir. I was like, where is the gas? Well, there's the gas. <laughs> so this thing here is now actually viable at a thousand kilograms. It actually replaces my infinite storage. That is actually crazy. And that is definitely a good thing to know. I thought it was all sour gas. No, only that one tile was sour gas. All the other tiles around here are actually hydrogen. And that can just free float. I really don't care about it in any way, shape or form. Aluminum ore. Let's see what else do we have here. We have 31 tons of gold. Uh, iron to steel. Iron ore to iron. We have 40 tons. Wolframite to tungsten. So we can get us some tungsten actually. And copper ore. We are completely out of copper ore. Um, if we are out of copper ore, how are our sluice hatches doing? And why are you cramped? How many of you are in here? Do we have an egg in here? Or why are you cramped? What am I, what am I missing right now? Oh, 100 tiles minus 4 here makes 96. You are at 96. Critters, 9. Where is there a ninth critter? Um, I'm, oh, there's an egg. There's an egg hiding. <laughs> God. Come on, get that egg out of there. Maybe we need to build more incubators to prevent that from happening. There's also an egg in here, a hatchling egg. Get it out of there. And up here on the top, how do hatches end up in here? I don't understand. Oh, we don't have an incubator for hatchling eggs. That's how they end up in here. Let's wrangle this one and get it out of here. And move this one over to right there. The reservoir makes so much more sense. I can't agree more. 100%. Uh, I kind of forgot that it exists, honestly, because I'm used to it for so long that it is 150 kilograms, which is nothing. So if I would have known that, I would have not even needed this infinite storage right here, to be very honest with you. How are we doing down here? We have this polluted oxygen here. You don't pick up eggs from the room? No, I don't. And that was actually by design. I wanted to build more incubators and just forgot about it. I wanted to build uh, this entire room here full of incubators eventually. And then just uh, hatch them, hatch them, hatch them and uh, wash them. Right. To create more food. But I kind of forgot about building more incubators, so that is the reason why that didn't happen. We can probably build a couple more. Um, let's see here. Now we also don't need this one space here in between them anymore. Um, now that we know how to do this here properly. So let's build one more. One for normal hatchling eggs. There are two more hatchling eggs. You know what? Screw it. Um, we have six. Let's make a six uh, uh, omelette. Not the smooth hatch, though. And stone hatches, we also have nothing. So good. Let's get rid of that stuff. Wash them. <laughs> exactly, cereal. Exactly. <laughs> we need to make sure that our hatches are nice and clean. Right? <laughs> Let's try this here. Let's just dig into here. Let's screw it. I want to see what happens, and I want to start excavating this thing here and see how that goes, since I have actually never ever done this, so... Let's try this. Let's open all this here up. Nothing bad can happen. We are all fine. No problem at all. Just need the dupes to come by and actually do it. Peter <laughs> stares at the washers. <laughs> oh god. You can filter eggs from the conveyor rails. Yeah, I know we have a filter. Problem is, I just don't know exactly where to put them right now. 
Other than the egg room, I guess. I guess I could just sort of throw him in there. Now let's dig this here out and let's see what happens. Pure curiosity. And that will help us as well because if we have oil in this location right here, we can put down another temp shift blade, which will reach this tile right here. And the same goes for this end over here. So, uh, definitely gonna be helpful as well. I wonder if Cly ever considered the evolution risk they were taking with that mechanic in the game. <laughs> <coughs> Better than have overcrowded stable. Exactly. Exactly. Poor critters. We're just trying to make their life overall better. And that's our entire intention here. Also, while we're at it, really quickly. Let's plop in a few ladders along here. Something like this. And then let's make him too low. Something like this. And then another two. Something like this here. And then dig all of this stuff here out while we're at it. And down here on the bottom, we can just dig a four high all across. Not the ice though, we're gonna leave the ice alone. Here comes Elfie. Digging out more stuff. There goes the hydrogen. And then a temp shift plate made out of diamond right here and right there. Just as simple as that. That should help us annihilate a hell of a lot more heat out of those tiles right here, even though I'm slightly scared of those uh, 1,100 degrees in this temp temp shift plate right here. I guess we will see what happens with that. Oh god. Please do me a favor and build the right one first, not the left one. So what can you do with that fossil? I have no idea. No idea. Your guess is uh, roughly as good as mine. We will find out what happens when I dig this thing up. Let's see what happens first with this temp shift plate right here. Our oil temperature has increased drastically from when we started, that's for damn sure. This temp shift plate right here is made out of diamond. It has a thermal conductivity of 80. That is a lot of conductivity. A lot of conductivity. Don't know if that's a good idea. I really don't. Maybe we should build it out of something like... I don't even know. Obsidian 2, aluminum 205, yeah, not gonna do that. Iron 55, gold, <clears throat> thermal conductivity 2, 2, 15. Maybe a, a plate made out of Wolfram might wouldn't be the worst idea. Because this year, the risk of these 1100 degrees just flashing over right here. Save the game and let us see. All right. Let's have let's let's see what happens. Let's see how this goes. It's actually a lot less violent than I expected it to be. I mean, we are transferring a lot of heat in a very short amount of time, but it's still too much mass here thankfully in the crude oil. So now, let's excavate this stuff here, guys, please. And let's see what happens. It's fine, says Loey G. <laughs> if you excavate all for fossil, you get a nice permanent excavation site that gives you... Oh, oh wait, you wanted no spoilers. <laughs> That's right. Um, What do I need to excavate it? I do need to know that, though. I'm assuming either a scientist or an excavator guy. They should have both available. Plenty of it, actually. And it looks like we are getting slowly but steadily rid of our polluted water right here. I think they are actually auto-bottling it. Yep, speaking of the devil, right there. Another 200 kilograms are a goner. Very nice. Probably need to build this thing here a little bit lower here very, very soon. So is there now somebody coming by here? 
This fragment has been preserved in petrified dirt. Killjoy. Current errand. Killjoy? Where you at? There you are. Okay, he's uh, slightly hammering at it. And Champster is here for the other one. Okay, cool, now we have this thing. I'm assuming I need to leave it there and I can't just uh, demolish it. Probably not a good idea to, to demolish it. We, we're just gonna leave it alone for now. What did fall out of there though? 1,500 kilograms of fossil? 1.5 tons? Good grief. Anything else that came out of this thing here? I don't see anything. 1.5 tons of a fossil. Holy cow, now we have 5.3 tons. Very good. Our lime production is going nicely. Also, thanks for putting the speed at 2%. Not sure when you changed it, but 1% is driving me insane. <laughs> yeah, it is time to put a little bit more speed on. It's actually three times. Um, I do use a mod. Uh, this here is actually uh, one times, three times, and ten times right here. So you can clearly see this here is ten times speed. You can demolish it. There's only one that you can't demolish, usually, I think. You can now, after exca excavation, demolish. I have never actually completed the storyline. I have never actually completed any storyline because that didn't exist when I played the game the last time. It appears that there are more of this giant critter's bones strewn around the asteroid. It's vital that we reassemble the skeleton for deep analysis. Is that a giant hatch that is going to come back to haunt me uh, for washing all his friends? I hope not. But okay, I really wanted to get into this thing, but unfortunately, we don't have time anymore. Um, there are three more. Yes, there are three more. We know where two of them are. One is over here and we saw one down here. I don't know where. Oh, and one is up here. So, okay, we have actually three of them. This one right here. Uh, this one right here. We have the frozen fossil, the ember fossil, and the ancient specimen. I'm going to make it a priority in the next stream um, that we make sure that all of those are being excavated. That is definitely for sure. I just want to see what happens. It's that simple and that is truly easily accomplishable just dig over here we are done uh, dig down here we are done and dig out down here in any way shape or form that we feel like and we are done very very good but yeah i would say our base is looking a hell of a lot better than when we started about five hours ago we have now natural gas generators with a hell of a lot of natural gas we have uncovered not uncovered we have tamed that this natural gas guys are right here which is now looking a hell of a lot better and by now by the way we can dig through here as well down here on the bottom we have another one we're getting ready to also make good use of this one yeah on top of that down here on the bottom we have now metal a metal refinery with a ton of steel actually 2.5 tons to be very precise and up here on the top we built a nice little structure for capturing wonderful plastic and also creating uh, some wonderful petroleum. Our liquid pump down here actually has now something to pump. Look at that. We did eventually heat up those tiles. And we can see it in our F3 overlays. Those polymer presses here are actually no joke. So building these tiles here not out of um, insulated tiles may have been a mistake, I guess. But we will see. Other than that, we also have Atmo suits, and right here they are currently dead because we ran out of uh, polluted water right here. Something that we will rectify with all of this polluted water here very soon though. Uh, some symbol reads. And we still have, let's take a uh, look real quick, uh, reed fibers. 79 of them. So we have still 79 left over, or 78 actually. That will last us for a good amount of time. Yeah, that is a uh, quite a good looking base, honestly. I have definitely done worse in the past, 
and especially while doing it live and talking to you guys. Um, yeah, it's certainly a new experience for me. Slowly but steadily, I'm getting better at it, I think, now that we are five episodes deep. And I will be back for you guys on the Easter weekend. I will be gone the next two weekends, so unfortunately, we will have to wait a little bit for my return. And I hope you guys stick around and we'll be here then. Um, is this base game or spaced out? This is the spaced out version. Thankfully, because otherwise we couldn't do fancy stuff like this here. This here is actually the polluted water that is coming out from our bathrooms and you can see it has no germs because we have wonderful radiation. After two weeks, you will need to rewatch the stream to catch up. Nah, I don't think so. I think we will be fine after two weeks. But six months, though, that's a whole nother level. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining and for watching, especially, of course, the guys that stayed here from the very beginning for a full five hours. You guys are just completely nuts. And with that, I say thank you and peace.